Oh, hello there, you right? Sorry, I'm I'm running behind. Bear with me. Oh, it's working, yes. Yeah, right. Yes. I'm I'm in the car. I'm in Clement. I'm in Clement. Um I'm not near the PC, so I'm gonna struggle to see all the messages because they they come through and on the phone here they just disappear. So um I uh I might miss some. So if I miss some just repeat them or you know, I haven't missed it on purpose. Uh the way I've been doing them before, I've had the PC in front of me and I can see everything. So um yeah. And my eyes aren't great and I'm I don't know why I put the phone so far away. So um yeah, that's basically uh that bit. Um before I get well, before everyone starts talking, um I said I'd uh, answer three questions from the members Q and A. So I did a members post and asked to give me three questions to get started on, and I'm going to try and find one now. Uh, right, there we go. Good morning. No, it's not. Oh yes, because you're probably on the other side of the world. Uh, right. So the first question I'm going to answer quickly. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a handsome man who's asked me this. Um, he says, this is 16 Valver, and he said, If I had to choose between never driving any TVR or any Citroen for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Uh, that's pretty easy, TVR, because TVRs only do, like, one thing. They just, they're just sports cars, well, just sports cars, but they're sports cars. Uh, Citroens, you can get hot hatches, Luxo barges, whatever a 2CV is, people's cars. Um, they did a rotary engine helicopter, that would be an exciting way to die. Um, so yeah, I would uh, never drive a TVR again because you can have fun driving Citroens. So um, the other questions now I will answer in a separate Q&A video. I'm rushing through them a little bit, I'm running late because I, I burnt my finger just now. Um, uh, duh, duh, duh. Is there a non-Citroen classic you'd like to get your hands on, says Psycho63. Uh, yeah, loads. Tons. Um, I wouldn't normally have as many Citroens as I've got now. Um, I think, uh, I hadn't planned it, but it's just the way it's gone. Um, they are my, probably my favourite make of the old cars, but... Um, yeah, there's plenty of plenty of non citrons. You're going to ask me to name some. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> An MGA. I like MGAs. MG Magnet. Uh, quick, name some cars. Hillman. No, I've got Hillman. BMW M1. Old Japanese stuff, Mazda, Mazda RX-3, or like the early RX-7s, uh, yeah, all sorts. Oh, a Daihatsu Fellow Max. Um, and then, right, let me do one more quickly. Uh, it's got, I've got all my, all the comments here, I didn't realise there were so many. This is not professional, is it? I'm trying to think of one that... I'm trying to find one that is not too wordy to answer. Uh, I'm going to be long with that one. Oh, here we go. Right, how has your life changed since the expansion of YouTube commitment? Does it impact your day job? This is from Jim Darling. Rip, darling. Um... Does it impact your day job, or do you shift all the YouTube efforts for edits, etc., to the evenings and see the family less? Um, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I don't. All the editing I do at home in the evenings or on weekends, I am doing it a lot at the moment. Um, 
because I'm kind of when I've got the motivation to do it, I do it. Because if I lose the motivation, then I just stop. So, um, but at the same time, I, I I do need to try and balance it better. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't impact the day job really because I'm on my own and I can't really afford not to work on customers' cars and things. So, um, yeah, I uh, hasn't really changed from that point of view. I'm quite I'm quite uh, what's the word regimented. I don't I, I don't let myself get too dragged into working on my own cars. Um, but um, you know, I'll, if I'm doing a job, I'll do the job, and I'll do my own stuff afterwards. Um, the only thing I found is that since I got Clement, uh, I've I keep looking at it. I keep walking past and then looking and then getting sucked into it, and I'm opening the bonnet and looking around it, going, "Oh, I see. Yeah, that goes there. That works there. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, that... And I'm supposed to be doing something else, so it is a bit of a distraction having Clement here. That's that is true. But I think that won't be a problem when it's on the road and when it's being driven. So um, hopefully that distraction will go. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, no, on the whole, it hasn't really changed, to be honest. So is the sound a bit low? I don't know. Uh, I can't change it. Let me try. I'm just looking at some, no, I can't change it. Is it? Is it quiet? Any if it's quiet, somebody else say it's I might be mumbling, to be fair. A bit low. How does it smell in here? says Simon Novad. Um a whiff of brie. No, it smells of piss really. <laughs> it stinks. It's horrible. It smells of onions, look. Hmm. I was gonna put the hat on, but it's 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 too hot in here. I didn't. I opened. I left the windows up because I didn't want to make the sound go weird. But it's too hot. So yes, right. That, that's questions done. That doesn't really go br brilliantly. So how is everybody? Uh, live chat. There we go. It's a bit low, but not disastrously so. I'm quite a long way away because. Uh, DS's are quite big, so you're quite a long way away. Look, you're beyond arm's reach. Uh, I wonder where the microphone is on the phone. This is the steering wheel with Clement. So. Oh. I'm going to try and... Oh, try and get comfy and then I'm hopefully a little bit closer. Right, okay. Right, the, oh, the chat thing's really annoying. It keeps disappearing. Why? Evening, Cocker. Evening, evening, Mr. Steve. I've just answered your question. So now you're going to have to wait however long this takes to go back and see what the answer was. But it wasn't exciting. It was all a bit... Um, they were all a bit boring, to be honest. I didn't answer them very well. So, uh, right. Mix of leaked LHM and mould. It was on a farm, I think, before, so it might. It does smell a bit farmy. Um, where's that gone? Uh, right. Eighty-eight Citroen CX Athena twenty-two TRS. Yay or nay? Well, it depends what you're asking me. If you're asking me, um, should you do a lap of the Nurburgring in it? No. Um, but uh, if um, if you just want to cruise down the road, yes. Uh, yes, it was whether I'd been the Citroens or the uh, Blackpool Rockets, and it was that I'd been the Blackpool Rockets, which is perhaps unsurprising. Um, because the, the TVRs, I, I love them, but they only do one thing. The steering wheel has a little hole from behind, does it? What, here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Part of the character, um, yeah. I, I, you know, TVRs. I love them, um, but they only really do one thing. Whereas Citroen made trucks, buses, uh, all-terrain vehicles, uh, and a helicopter with a rotary engine, which sounds as good as you think it would. So, um, 
Gray the Flo Oh, that's... Hello, yes. Gray the... Gray the Freudian Sergal. I've no idea what that is. Uh, how are you? You're the one with... He's got Talbot... Alpines? Solaras or something like that? Um, yeah. Hope you're well. I'm going to take my shoes and socks off. I know that's disgusting, but... Consider it as a rarity check, please. I can't remember what the question was. Oh, CX. Um, well, yeah, any CX is cool, isn't it? One tall but alpine. There we go. Hello, Gary Anderson. Is it even? See, a lot of these, a lot of people who watch my videos are from down under. So, for some people, it's um, it's uh morning and some people it's evening because you know that's how the world works so in time smells of brie now i imagine you're either trying to insult me and say i smell a cheese or um or you think i've kept cheese in it but i don't know either one of those is wrong um but i do have, i've got some cheese in the fridge i do need to take that home because otherwise it's going to go off riveting stuff this isn't it um yeah no, it, it smells a bit rank, but it's going to get all new seat covers and things, so. Uh, we used to see Talbot Solaras back at home as they built them locally in the old Saab factory. Oh. Worst car you have owned. Oh, God, here we go. Uh, worst car you have owned, Finley Plimpton. I'm pretty sure you asked me that last time. Um... Oh, because I stall for ages and think about answers to questions and then I miss all the chat. Uh, pro yeah, probably a Polo. I had a Volkswagen Polo for a little bit. It was cheap, but it broke down three times in about three weeks uh, and left me on the side of a motorway when it ran out of petrol, when it said it had a quarter of a tank in it. Um, yeah, you could have fixed all those things, but it, yeah, it wasn't great. So, um, USA here. Scott Walter in the USA. Bonjour. Jeff Langley must be in France. What was my first car? Do you really need to ask that? What do you think it was? Second letter of the alphabet and uh, third to last letter of the alphabet? BX. Got one when I was 16. Uh, can't criticise you adding Clement. I just bought another Lotus. Now I have two XLs and a Spree. That's excellent. I'll keep looking up here. Sorry, you're down there. Um, yeah, I like I like that. This is low tie. It smells like teen spirit. No, this is. I, I don't really. I get that. Yeah. I'm not. I, I'm not massive on that one. I like. What's my favourite Nirvana song? Oh, what's it called? Gone completely. Oh, there's all sorts. You know you're right. That's a good one. Territorial pissings. That's a good one. There's loads. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. S just slow. Right. Hi from Barnsley. Hello, David. Pan Panther from Barnsley. Sorry, late. Don't worry, I was as well. Uh, someone on Pistonheads described your channel as like Hubner if Ian was a competent mechanic. <laughs> someone on Pistonheads has seen my channel. I wonder where that was. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, it's nice to say I'm competent. Hello, Scottish car enthusiasts and trains TV. That's if you ever have t-shirts made, you're going to have to have quite a small font. Um, my Zara Picasso is a terrific load lugger, says JP. Remove the seats and it's like a van. A successor to the 2CV. Um, well, in some ways, actually, that's not a bad shout. In some ways, it is. Cheap, cheerful, basic, made to move people around cheaply or stuff, versatile. Compromised in looks for some people. That's not a bad shout, actually. I hadn't thought of that. Um, yeah, we had a Picasso. 
the way it drove was horrible. Um, the seats were horrible. I thought it looked horrible. I mean, I didn't like it, but it was so good. It was really, really good. Um, I became fond of it because it was so good. So um, I didn't like it from for the sort of car it was, but it got and yeah, um, it was a two liter HDI. I think there's, it appears in one of the videos briefly. Um, can't think which one. I think it's the one where I sent about was I wrong about Cecily? I think in there there's a little video of it pulling away. So, um, oh whoa, okay, hang on. Uh, oh, 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 here we go. Uh, no, Milton Keynes just trying to get in the mood. <laughs> Unlucky. How does a Renault 25 compare as an Opron designed to the CX? I was inspired by the interview with him in Octane and bought one. Lives in France. Nice. Nice. I do like a 25. I think the earliest ones are the best looking. Um... How does it compare with the CX? I think the CX looks a bit more dainty, or well, certainly the early ones, a bit more exotic, kind of. Um, but the 25 un unquestionably looks a bit more modern, probably because it is. Um, 25 had the... I mean, I like the CX's interior, but I think I prefer the 25's. I think the 25's interior is wicked. Um, I like Renault 25's. There was a girl I used to go to school with, and I swear her dad had one. I'd, every time I see one, I remember seeing one when I was a kid, when I was at school. I, can't, I swear there was a silver red 25 involved somewhere. So, um, oh, dear. hang on, hang on. Uh, BX was the first car I bought. TZI, rare one. What was the car you most regret getting rid of? Uh, Meg at the moment. Um, uh, I'm Alfa Romeo 156 because I didn't have it. Um, I didn't have it as long as I should have done to enjoy it. Um, it was a 2.5 V6, and I didn't have it long enough, and I should have. I should have kept it if I'd. Mind you, I didn't appreciate it. I was only 20... How old was I? I wasn't that young. I was 20... 4? 25? They had the telly dials on it and the little skirts on the side. I loved it. I just, for some reason, I got, got it into my head that it was going to be trouble. And, um, and sold it. So, for more than I paid for it, admittedly. But, um... Ooh. Uh, ozone generators to remain remove odors. Is that the right chat? No, Matt London. I recognise your name. Maybe it's. Are you meaning here? So you, your whole interior is going to be pulled out yet. Yeah, so, Bleach was the best album. Mm, I actually like a neutro. Um, Francis Farmer will have a revenge on Seattle or New York. That was a good tune. Your video spurred me to change my broken front panel on a Fiesta Mark VI. It saved a lot of money, so thanks for the agonising experience. Don't pin that on me. I didn't tell you to change the front panel on a Fiesta. That's nothing to do with me. But, yeah. Did your shorts... Oh, that was you! The train, train chap! They did. I have, um... I actually forgot they were coming. You need to send me your detail. I want to send you the money for them. Um, yes, I'm not going to go into massive detail because I have recorded a small video about those. Because what I thought was in that box and what ended up being in that box were completely different things. But you will see that in the video. It's only going to be a short one. But um, but it's a genuine reaction. So, a mailbag. Uh Gray says, I've got that beige BXRE now. I don't suppose I could be cheeky and ask a quick technical question, given that you're the BX expert. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. You're a channel member. You're allowed to. That's, that, that was one of the things. Uh, whether you want to just ask it, like, message me or something on there, or you can ask it on here if you want. If I see it, I'll answer it. Um, 
there's an official Lotus press release saying the correct player of Lotus <laughs> is Lotus. <laughs> there you go then. I was being about Alan Partridge, wasn't I? Uh, ben Beret, hi, quick imp question if you don't mind. Can you recommend a supplier for rated brake shoes? I remember I bought some called BG95s, but not sure if any new tech has come out since. I have to be honest with you, Ben. I don't know a huge amount about imps. Um, I, I went to that Goodwood track day and I was kind of just on my own. I didn't, I don't really know anyone and I don't really know anything about them. And, um, and mine doesn't have shoes on the front anyway. I've got discs. So, uh, if you want to improve the stopping power, there's a chap on, um, on Facebook called Robin Human. And he, he made the, uh, rear shoes that I've got, the finned wicked looking ones, cast alloy ones. They're actually off a smart car, I think, or a Renault Twingo. But he modifies them and he makes these machines, these adapters to go in the middle so they fit. Um, but he also does uh, front disc conversion kits based on K11 Micra, I think it is. Or was it K12? K13? I can't remember. Off a Micra. Um, and uh, people love them. So I, I, I assume they fit under the 12-inch wheels. I don't know. Um the kit I've got is off a of Fiesta Mark One, and uh, they work quite net well now that I've got the right master cylinder. I, I didn't have a sport master cylinder before; I had a standard one, and it was awful, horrible pedal feel. But now I put the sport one, and it's got quite nice brakes. Um, but they're quite small; they're designed to go under 12-inch wheels, like the cars have standard. And I've got 13, so I could have bigger brakes on the front. But my logic was that. Um, if I can lock the brakes up with the brakes it's got, I don't really need to, I'm not really gain a huge amount by uh, going for bigger ones, other than perhaps a little bit more control. Um, but, uh, you, make, you know, getting the imp to go at the moment is, is the uh, the concern, not making it stop. So, um, yeah, they are, I, I'd ask on the imp forums, mate. Honestly, I'd just stick with the brands. Mintex is a good one. Uh, Lockheed, old school Lockheed stuff's decent. Yeah. So I'm afraid I don't know exactly. Oh, that's gone again. Hang on. Oh, right. Okay. I'm getting behind here. Just like to say I enjoy my vids. Thank you, Larry. Is it Larry Salmon? Larry Simon? Salmon. Larry Simon. You enjoy them very much. Thank you. Um, me too. I saw you on Pissnets first, then years later, recognising a photo of your garage. We mean Steptoe's Yard. Um... I might have to use S C E and T V for a T-shirt. I mean, that's still that's still a bit difficult to remember. But yes, abbreviations. What's your favourite era of Citroen? 60s, 70s, 80s. Oh, see, that's a difficult one. Um, I would have always said 80s because you've got... Well, basically, you've got the cars that came out in the 80s. You've got BX, AX, XN. So, and they're three that I love. But, I think the 70s is, is winning me over a bit. I mean, the DS technically is 50s, isn't it? So, um, I love, the, the more I learn about the oldest, the older ones, the more I love them. They're just crazy. Um, there's, especially on the SM, which is just there, can you see? You can see the SM, you got Clement and the SM in one shot. Um, the old, uh, the old ones. It's just if someone tells, if someone told Citroen that something was difficult, um, rather you know, and expensive to sort, rather than go, oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. That we should do a different way. It's almost like they just got stubborn and went, well, we'll find a way of making it work then. And they're like, yeah, but that's going to take some hugely complicated hydraulic valve assembly that's going to cost tons to make and everything well we'll do that then we're just going to scare all the garages off and all the dealers and everything like that and people will say it's complicated yes but it will have zero torque steer it's that kind of thing I, there was just no compromises they do what they want to do um and as time went on obviously that's no way to run a business really uh that's just the that's the the heart versus head thing and as time went on especially when persia got involved it become head versus you know head over heart sort of thing um, so although I love BXs and things like that, um, they are much more sensible. They're not crazy in the slightest in their engineering. They're very straightforward cars, whereas uh, the SM, it's particularly bit, the DS as well, and the CX. The CX is a bit nutty. So, yeah. Um, so to answer your question, I don't know. 
crap answer that, isn't it? Sorry. Uh, um. Oh. Oh dear, I'm I'm miles behind again. Sorry. Um, my one and only Citroen was the C4 1.6 HDI exclusive. I loved it, especially the MPG. They are good on fuel. Um, they, you know, they do eat turbos and other have problems. He probably didn't have it long enough to hate it. Um, but yeah, I had a C4. I liked it. It was funky. I wouldn't say it was the best driving car ever. But it's, it didn't drive amazingly well, but I really liked it. Um, how's the gearbox doing in the C6? Uh, same as it was when it left. Uh, cheers, David. It um, slams into reverse still, but it doesn't slip going up the gears. It started last couple of days. It's starting to get a bit confused between gears, so I don't know if something's on the way out. That said... You have to change the oil like six times, and the stuff that came out was black when I did it, so uh, it probably is due a few more flushes. But I think to get it working properly, I would probably have to um, buy a new valve block. But there is a chance the torque converter has got a problem as well, so uh, once it's moving, it's fine. But um, it's a lot better than it was, it's usable, that's the thing. So, could Citroen's best be described as money pits? Uh, says Run Monkey, Run, Run Monkey, yeah. Um, no, I don't think, I think any car can be a money pit. I don't think it has to be a Citroen. I mean, any old car that's had a number of different owners of varying mechanical, um, sympathy or ability has the potential to bite you in the ass, really. So I don't think Citroen's, I think the thing with any old car, and it is true with Citroen's, is you take them to specialists. Don't, don't, um, has it gone dark in here? Is it me? Is it my phone? I think it was my phone. Um, yeah, don't cheap out. Just, you know, uh, take them somewhere. If you can't do it yourself, take it to people who know what they're doing. Because although it seems more money to start with, in the long run, it'll be cheaper. Um, it's the same here when people bring TVRs in here. I'll, I'll find things because I know where to look. And I go, oh, that fuel, that fuel pipe's about to go. Um, you know, or, uh, oh, your bush, your thrust washers on your suspension bushes, one of them's broken. That means that suspension bush is going to be dead in about 2,000 miles if we don't put a washer in it, should I do that? Um, so prevention over cure is the way to keep cars going. So no, I don't think Citroens are money pits any more than anything else. You know, they might be more complicated in some ways, but other cars will be more costly in other ways. So, um, And this, the suspension system is actually not that... If you figure it out, if you look around it and follow the diagram and, 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 and own one, and drive it and get to feel it and understand it they're actually not that complicated anyway so um says the man who was so scared of working on his sm he bought a ds to practice on but um yeah so uh oh God. i'm gonna have to put the comments on the um i'm gonna have to put the comments on the top comments only thing because it's they're going faster than they normally do uh oh wow i'm a long way behind <laughs> um, right, hello, Jao, Sarah, Oliviera, uh, Phil Garner, I had a 156 V6, best engine short of a Maserati, um, yeah, I liked it, yeah, it was good, I, I enjoyed it, a lot of character, sounded nice, Xanti V6 sounds pretty similar, actually, there's not, well, with a busted exhaust it does, so, um, a f school friend of mine's parent had not only a BX, but a Dutton Sierra too, an odd but great pair of cars. Dutton Sierra, Christ. <laughs> the 90s were great. They were great. I missed the 90s. I feel touched every time you scroll through the chat. Never knew I liked my eyeball being caressed. You have to pay extra for that. You shouldn't be getting that for free. Uh, would argue my Defender is more of a money pit than a Citroen. I would probably let you argue that. I think you're probably right. Uh, just like to say, I enjoy your videos very much. Thank you. Why do you love the Citroen PSO? Also really like them, had AXs, C5, Xantias. Um, I would say, well, the Citroen, why do I like the Citroen thing? I've got an idea for a video on that, so I'll answer that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I think they're good cars as well. So I love the engineering, so I wouldn't be into them if I didn't. Um, but there are other reasons. Incesticide was the best album. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, hey, Richard, hey, everyone. Hello, Arky74. Literally just stepped out of my Xantia ten minutes ago. 
Have you got backache? Um, love the channel and absolutely adore Clement already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I th Clement is. People are quite taken by Clement, which is which is nice. Um, people walk in here and they go, "Oh my God, you got your work cut out with that." You know what are you going to do to that? And I said, uh, "Nothing. It's all be underneath. I'm, I'm going to leave it looking as it is." And the look of horror on their faces. Um, oh, our first celebrity is here, Miss Hubnut. Hello. Um, my first car, Hest Jensen, is it? Or Jensen? Um, my first, I'm still dirty, look at that. My first car was a 1977 CX 2400 Palace with a four-speed box. Same colour as your Clement, metallic blue. Same colour as Clement was. Um, Clement is now a... I found out the boot lid on Clement was originally Brun Scarab... Scarab? Scarabair? It's, I found the original colour. It's nothing like the colour of the car. So that's why it's got a DS23 uh, 5 badge on it. So, um, RK11 has rear discs. It's an SR from 1996. Sweet. Yeah, they, they missed the trick. They should have done a hot hatch Nissan. They should have done like a 1600 twin cam, 120 brake, short ratio gears, LSD, something like that. They never did, did they? I suppose no one would have bought it, would they? It was the wrong sort of car for that. It was a bit cute rather than um, sort of aggressive and hot hatchy. But, I, you know, maybe they would have done. Well, they know better than me, don't they? I suppose they probably knew what they were doing. Um, oh, I'd just like to say I enjoy your videos. Very much. Oh, I've done that one already, mate. Yep. Um, the fuel gauge on the BX does work on the bench, but it but it's not showing what's in the tank. The low fuel light is off, so is that a sign my sender's good or bad? Your sender's probably knackered. Um, mine in the Mark One ended up in bits in the fuel filter, so um, and they are becoming hard to find, I'm afraid. So I would take it out and test it, bench test it. But don't forget, um, if you test it in water, which is what we've done here before, um, you'll get different readings because water is heavier than petrol. So... Uh, 90s AX, 70s GS SM CX, perfect. It's hard to argue, isn't it? I never said I had an SM. Did I not? I swear I mentioned that. Did the AX ever get the 1.4 from the factory? Yeah, yeah, the GT was a 1.4. Uh, well, Zetos GT says it there. Zetos, Zetos. Yeah, GTI was 1.4. Uh, GT was 1.4. These are 1.4 normal models. Um, First diesels were 1.4s. They had an they had an all alloy diesel engine, but based on the all alloy petrol 1.4. So that went about as well as you can imagine. Um, head gasket failure. Um, late to the party. What have I missed? Also, do I need snacks? Uh, not missed. You've missed me trying to answer some questions. Um, I haven't brought any snacks. So, I can't believe you missed the SM start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the smoke is still clearing. Hello. Oh, Driven247, hello. Ian was so cautious in avoiding reversing the C6. Yeah, I did. I was, I was, when we were on holiday, I was looking for parking spaces that I could just drive into and drive back out again. Um, but, uh, yeah, sound is low. Yeah, I mean, I'll move it. Let me... Hang on. Let's move Clement. Move inside Clement. What about now? Nope. It's going to be a bit wonky, but I can sit back now. Oh, oh I've got really bad pins and needles. Oh. Right. Is it? If the sound's better now, let me know. Oh, it's gone. I'm not trying to... There's no earthquake here, don't worry. There we go. Um, uh, always wanted a GS by rotor. Yeah. Yeah, I'd quite like a GS by road. Sorry, I'm not trying to bash bash everyone up. This thing here's kind of a bit 
There we go. Um, Oh, I lost where I was. Um, always wanted a GS by Rota. Yeah. Uh, a car having had 18 previous owners is probably a bad sign. I might own one like that. Not always, because when um, people, uh, like TVR owners, um, I'm just trying to recline Clement's seat. Um, yeah, people own cars just to get it out of their system so certain cars if it was a normal everyday car um then uh yeah that would probably be um something to worry about but yeah if it's something like a lotus or tvr or ferrari or classic or something people just get them out of their system so the number of owners and also you know you get people putting cars in different people's names for insurance so um yeah i wouldn't worry too much about that depends on the car um, oh, right, hang on, I'm trying to keep up. Right, I apologise if I've missed anyone. Is it possible to have a CX GTI Turbo engined DS? Um, in theory, I do. I might be able to use the innards from one, but you wouldn't. If you're going to convert, if you're going to convert one, you'd put a v6 in it or something i'd have thought has there ever been anything through your workshop this year so far that you haven't wanted to give back um i can't even remember what's been in this year we had a tvr tamar in i quite like that uh haven't wanted to give back not a Ford Fairmont. Um, actually, no, at the time, I was quite happy to keep that because the aircon was immense. Uh, oh, I can't even remember what I've had in. I always get caught up with Griffiths. Every time I have a Griffith in, I quite fancy, but I, I have so many in that I, it kind of just becomes normal. Um, There probably is something, but I can't think of anything this year. Um, I don't tend to work on many cars I don't like, to be fair, so. Uh, it might be worth turning slow mode on in the chat. Let's try that. I've put... I've put it on top chat, okay, so I apologise if it if it has cut people out. Um bloody <laughs> It's really horrible when you do the scrolling thing on screen. Yeah, I've I've moved it on the other side now. I've realised I can scroll on this side. The camera's down here and I can scroll on this side, so I'm gonna do that. Um Uh, I'm lost now. Oh, here we go. What What is the local football club for Clement? <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's PSG. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be um into that. My CX's local is City. Not Man City. CXs were built in Aulnay, so they would be Paris FC? Or Red Star, one of them. Uh, is this the real Miss Hubnut? I expect it is. Uh, does the SM have a name? SM. I don't really name cars that often, so... Uh, at least kits are spending money on cars you love rather than old Volvos you hate, like me. Um, yeah, I wouldn't spend money on old Volvos I hate, to be honest. I can't see why I would do that. Um, you're not a celebrity car. 
if you go to a car show and you've got a stall and people queue up to see you, a celebrity. Uh, I feel like I need another car, but really I have no need for one, as one is enough. One? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten. So, hi, up and down, loving the stream, bit late to the party, but I have cider, so all good. Says all things Alex. Uh, I can't do cider. I've had, yeah, I've had uh, bad experiences when I was a kid. Um, love Clement, particularly the love the patina. Did you say it was staying as much as possible? Uh, yeah, yeah. I shall try and keep it as much as it is because a DS is built in a kind of odd way. It's like a big three, well, three D. Everything's three D. It's a big chassis, so all the panels un are unstressed. They all bolt on. So uh, unlike the SM, where the roof and the quarter panels and everything like that's all in the back panel, that's all welded on. In this, all the panels come off it, so you can just have a bare shell, which I will be driving around. Um, and uh, yeah, you can um, as long as that's solid. It doesn't matter what the body looks like. So. Uh, I'm hoping that I get to drive into roundabouts quickly and people will dive out of the way. So, um, I have an SM, yes. <laughs> uh, 26 mile shed. Yeah, but see, owning a car as a shed that you don't care about is is really liberating because you park it and you don't care. As long as it's there when you get back, and as long as it runs, um, it's really nice not to have to worry about where, you know, like when this is on the road, I can drive it and not worry, I, you know, unless someone hits one of the rare bits of trim, that would be annoying. But yeah, like if it rains, all right, <laughs> you know, whereas some cars, when you care about them too much, like if I take the imp home, it's not like I care about it more than this one, but. It leaks and it's not really weatherproof as well as it would be if I was using it daily. So every time it rains, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, your C6 did really well touring France on your holes. It did. Did amazingly well. Considering that it wasn't prepped at all. Uh, there was no preparation. It was just, surprise, you're going to France. Um, you know, we, we literally did get as far as the M25 before doing a U-turn and coming back. Had to change the time of the tunnel and everything like that. Um, it was 30... We got into France, it was uh, heading down... What was it the next day? We were going cross-country. We hit about 37 degrees according to the temperature gauge and we had no air con. So, <laughs> we're on the motorway in like, you know, in this serene car with all the windows down. Um, yeah, it was a good memory. Um, I want a BX, but I'm also not insane enough to try and import one to Canada. There are some in America. I've seen a one, uh, 16 TRS. Or was it a GT? I can't remember. One of them popped up in America on, um, oh, was it Bring a Trailer? Yeah, they are over there. I mean, obviously not officially, but yeah, people have taken them over there, but it wouldn't cost much to import one, would it? I wouldn't have thought. Nissan done a warm hatch. 160 SR on a K12 version. Excuse me, they did. And I used to think, oh, 160 SR, has that got 160 horsepower? In a micro, that, you know, one that looks like a frog. I thought, oh, that's amazing, and it doesn't. I was really disappointed. I think 160 means it's a 1.6. So, um, yeah. Some say you don't feel earthquakes in a hydro citron. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't in Clement. Honestly. Uh, should I bid on that Xantia Activia? And Activia is a yoghurt, David. Uh, you mean a Xantia Activa. Um, on eBay... Or is it too much of a risky purchase? If you mean that red one, the Dante Red Enreg, 
um, then you must absolutely bid on that because that is beautiful. Apart from the horrible universal um, side repeater that someone's put on it, the oval ones, um, that's awesome. It looks great. Uh, it ticks a lot of boxes for me. Um, Activas are rare cars and they are special cars and I own an Activa so I would say that. Um, the engine is guff, the one that went in the UK cars, but you can play with the boost and you get a bit of... they're very dull, but the engines in them, they're just monotone um, and thirsty and not particularly quick, but you can play with the boost, do a couple of things, get a little bit more character out of it. Um, and as long as you can get a bit more character than when you drive it and enjoy the suspension and everything, um, it, it really rounds it off. I mean, they do, they haul, they haul ass, um, second gear at around, like a slow roundabouts because they boost very low. So, um, you know, 2000 revs, the turbo starting to come in and you, you can pin it in second gear coming out of a roundabout. And of course it doesn't lean and it just, yeah, they really grip because they're so heavy. They don't really wheel spin much either because there's so much weight pushing the tires into the floor. Um, yeah, I would say absolutely buy that Activa. 100% buy that Activa. Um, and not just because I own one, but partly because I own one. So, any desire to have a Traction Avant? Very much so. I love Traction Avants. I think they're beautiful. Um, I just don't have any space or money. I'd have a, I wouldn't have one over a DS or... Uh, certainly not an SM. Um, so, yeah. But maybe one day. I mean, you know, these cars aren't going to be here forever. So, yeah, attraction would be nice one day. Any car with suicide doors would be interesting. So, um, I didn't want to keep Betty. I did while it was hot. While it was hot and everything was melting. Um, then I very much wanted to. Um, but because I was putting fuel in it, didn't necessarily want to keep doing that. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's an interesting car, <laughs> Betty. But um, what was that? What did I? Oh no, it wasn't it? No, don't worry. I have, I have a memory there, and it's not actually one that happened. So, I know what you wouldn't want to give back: a spare vehicle space. Yeah. Is my impression correct that Hubnut is a tight ass when it comes to paying for labour? <laughs> um, well, not in my experience, no. Um, in fact, if anything, he was one of the people who sort of says, "Oh, you should have charged me more." Um, I hate charging people money. I hate money. I hate business. It's stupid because I run one, but um. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm one of those people who always tries to charge as little as I can, um, and we get some I get some customers who turn around and say, "Are you sure that you know that charge me more for it?" You know, and to be fair, Ian, you know, the first time round said I hadn't charged him enough. Um, no, I don't think he's a tight ass. I think he's spending. I think the only the only thing that might make you think that might be that if you watch a video and think. He spent 700 quid or something on that Belingo and sort of going, oh, that was a big bill sort of thing. When the reality is that in 2022, a £700 bill wasn't actually that big. Um, I mean, it would be to me if I was paying it, but to a lot of people it's not. It's pocket money. Um, but I think that's because you have to remember that he's someone who probably did most of the work on his cars himself. So he's not really been one of those who's been paying garages very much to do the work and then when it's not a car that's a toy i mean bilingo for them is is a tool um and no one likes spending money on something they have to spend money on if you've got an every like we've got customers who come in here if you've got an everyday car you know if you're driving your focus down the road or something like that and the clutch goes well your dual mess flywheel goes and you get quoted a grand to fix it you're raging and you, oh, you know and then if you your TVR you're driving down the road and you think well, it's not pulling as much as it used to and you have a look at it oh the camshaft's worn it needs a new camshaft fitting a thousand pounds for a camshaft yeah yeah fine yeah no, no problem because you're excited because it's your toy and you want to do it up and then you want to drive it again afterwards and see if it's any quicker and um, 
I think people don't. I think things cost a lot of money for people when it's something that they don't want to be spending on. But if even if it's the same amount of money, if it's something they like spending money on, but it doesn't cost a lot of money. So, but no, the the short answer to that is no. I don't think he's a tight ass. Um, but I suspect he's probably not um, used to shelling out money on old cars to have them repaired. He probably well, he as far as I know, he doesn't normally fix cars. He normally just buys them and then sells them again. Normally at a loss when they're more broken than when he got them. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's fair. I wouldn't say he's a tight ass. Um, Rob Star, oh no. My 2CV would be Southampton FC. 2CVs weren't built in Southampton, um, Finley. Uh, they were built in. What's a good question? Some were built in Paris. And then I think they went. Ian told me this the other day. Was it Paris and then Portugal? So if they're built in Portugal, I don't know what. I don't know what club that would be, but yeah, it's got to be a local club to where the car is is um, built, not where it's registered. Because I mean, that means you know, where was I? Where was my? And that we're assuming that you're supporting your local team here, which is what you should do. You shouldn't be a plastic and support whatever team wins all the time, which is why I can't abide PSG. Um, for a football club, I meant where it was first registered. Well. I suppose that gives you a bigger variety, doesn't it, actually, thinking about it. Uh, Clement was registered in Bristol somewhere, so I don't know exactly where. Um, the SM was registered, I don't know where, but it would have been in Ohio or around that area, so it would have been soccer ball, not football. Oh, it would have been MLS. Sorry, the glove box is collapsing on Clement. I'm not trying to shake you all to pieces. There we go. Um, but if your 2CV is uh, Southampton FC, Finley Plimpton, then yes, because so am I. Uh, my CX was first registered in Manchester, then London, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, and now back in Brisbane. Your CX has travelled further than I have. Has a Reliant Fox gone? Yes, you, uh, uh, Johan? Yes, it has. It sold. It was very peculiar how that sold because I was almost at the point of um, contemplating putting it in the bin because I couldn't sell it. And then a guy rang about 500 times in the space of half an hour, desperate to buy it. Um, and then came that day with cash and a trailer and took it home. And I've seen pictures since and he's done work to it already. He's like, I don't know if he's done it in the order I'd have done it, but he's carpeted the interior out. I think he had a spare engine out of a Robin. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the Fox is living on, and I believe he's going to be enjoying it. So, hopefully. Well, he, he got some wheels for it. He put some, he put some wheels on it, which really shouldn't have looked any good. But when I saw the picture, I thought, actually, that does look quite good. So, um, yeah, thankfully it's gone. I I don't know why I bought it, to be honest with you. I'm not, nothing against people who love them, but... It's not my kind of thing, and it's pointless for me because it's, it's got two seats. It, it would have been free to tax it next year. That's the only advantage, and it probably would have done half decent MPG. But no, I wouldn't have. Even by cho out of choice, I wouldn't have driven it. And then if I'd have got it on the road, and then driven it around for a bit, and then threatened to sell it, uh, all the subscribers would have gone mental. So. Um, We'll watch this later, still at work. Yes, do some work, Terry. Um, there we go. Uh, what happened to the S-Max? Well, the S-Max isn't really a fleet member. Oh, that's cringeworthy. Um, yeah, the, the S-Max isn't really a, a, a part of this, but I, I don't know what the problem was with it. Um, it's got a seized rear caliper, and... It's stuttering intermittently, and so I've got to have a look at it. But it's going to be one of those awful problems, I suspect, that shows no symptoms, and then just randomly crops up. So, uh, which is really annoying. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's an old car. It's done some miles, not as many as a C6. But I'm deliberately leaving the XM's bodywork as it is, rough as, and the number of characters very liberating not have to worry about where it's parked see on the xm 
I'd be the other way around. I'd have to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, because the XM is, it's not, if you get a tatty car from the 90s, it just looks like a tatty car. Whereas if you get a tatty car from the 60s or 70s, it looks like it's out of whiff now and I, and, um, and therefore cool. So, yeah, uh, and the problem with XMs is tatty on that probably just means lack of peel, doesn't it? Um, XMs are wonderful cars. They really are. I would say they're in the top th top three best riding Citroëns ever, I would say, uh, if you get one that's sorted. Um, yeah, they're, they're brilliant. They're really, really cool. Definitely see that one through. But if it were me, I mean, that said, it would cost a fortune to paint it. I speak to the guy who... Um, I drove his white one. He painted that himself in his garage. So, and it's not bad. So, speak to him. I had a ride in the Zantia Activa. It just blew my mind with how they control the roll. The, um, the Zantia Activa is... There's this thing. I mean, Zantia Activa owners can be a nightmare. Because they kind of act like the car is a supercar slayer. And it isn't. It's still a Zantia. Um... You know, it still only has fairly skinny tyres and everything like that. The, the trick with... And it's not that they handle well. Um, because they, they kind of don't... Handling is more about communication and how you can place a car and stuff. Um, Activas are more impressive. What they're, what they're capable of is mind-blowing. Um, mind-bending. It's... Um, I remember the first time we drove one. First time I drove... In fact, I think I saw a comment... So Simon K there, who's a knobhead, he, um, yes, he has mentioned a funny memory there. We first, the first time went in an Activa, me and him went up to uh, Buckinghamshire in a Cavalier that had the front bumper nailed on, if I remember rightly, which is actually quite a sensible car, really. Um, and I told him to buy his anti Activa, and he said, instead of going why he went yeah that's a great idea and i told him what they did and we drove up to buckinghamshire somewhere and um it was on a forecourt it was about he'll correct me 600 quid 700 quid just a dark green p reg activa and the guy to the guy it was just as ant yeah you know he was happy to take the cavalier and part exchange and i remember we drove it on this road and I'd never been in one. I've been going on to him, telling him how amazing these things are. Never actually been in one. And we went. Around, I remember we went around the first corner, and we just, we just looked at each other like that. I guess it was, oh my god! It just gone round like this. It just doesn't lean. Um, and the crazy thing about an Activa, it's not that it doesn't lean because a lot of cars don't lean, but they don't lean because they've got rock hard suspension. Activa goes around a corner flat, going around the corner hard hits a bump mid-bend and the suspension takes it. It's just as soft as it was. It's really weird. Um, they do lean. They're not. It's not zero roll. They do lean. And if you've got weak tyres, they bend and the whole that causes the car to lean. So you know, it's... And none of them are 100% healthy now. So, But yeah, they're, they are special, special cars. And I will... Um, there will be more content on, on Activa's coming. Um, in fact, there will be quite a... Will there be some exciting comments? Uh, content on Activa's coming. Well, you'll be the judge of that. But um, Yeah, we went... That, remember get that run we had up the avenue with the bleed valve wound out? So if you take a Zantia Activa, and, uh, there's a boost control solenoid on the bulkhead. Um, and I think that... Now, what does that do? I can't remember what it does exactly. I think it was a sensor for the ECU. So if the, if it tries to overboost, the ECU cuts it um, and restricts it. And I think it was 0.8 bar standard. But if you tap into that hose that goes into that and put a bleed valve in that wastes boost on purpose, or recirculates it, um, then the wastegate opens further on the turbo. And you could take it up to, I think it went to a bar before that sensor had a duck fit. Um but the, the funniest one we did was when we unplugged that sensor. Didn't even put the bleed valve in. Just unplugged the sensor. And it just went nuts. And then I think we were... F I think you give it a load of welly in second gear. First gear is pointless. Give it a load of welly in second gear and it 
threw you back in the seat. I think we had a guy in the car who said, geez, that pulls as hard as my skyline. Um, and then third gear, we, <laughs> we wound it up and it, it was spooling and it was off it went. And then the ECU, if it overboosts and that sensor didn't cut in, the ECU goes, uh, you're in danger of meltdown here. No. And it just cuts everything. And I think I remember headbutting the dashboard because it, it was like a very hard cut um, rev limiter. So that was quite funny. Traction of Ant need support from the younger generation. Yeah, they do. Um, they do. They're not. They're probably not seen as a sort of car. There's a girl I know. A girl I know. Just like in school. A lady I know. It's either Sarah or Sarah. I don't actually know how you pronounce the name. She's got one, which is very nice. It's burgundy. Um, and she's one of the younger generation, I would, I would guess. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really know many people that, that have one. Um, I suppose because to a lot of people, they look more typical of an old car. They don't stand out like a DS does. But the silly thing is, if you compare attraction to other cars of the era, side by side, and look at the details, they're completely different because they are built completely differently. Um, they are revolutionary cars, traction advance. They, they just they didn't quite look as revolutionary as they were unless you looked closely um in other cars at the time like some of the lanciers at the same time in the 30s they were absolutely mad as well they were really advanced um so yeah i, I attractions definitely need I mean, attractions are beautiful attractions are cheap compared to like ds's and things like that you can get a nice traction a working one probably in the uk for eight grand I would think eight or nine thousand. It wouldn't be a show winner, but it would be a nice, solid, honest, solid car. Um, yeah, I love them. I think they're great. Uh, my dream daily would be a Zantia V6 Estate, preferably with standard low spec wheel covers. <laughs> a sleeper. Do you know? I wanted to build a Zantia sleeper, but I wanted to build a two liter HDI with a remap because you can take a, a two liter HDI one ten up to about one hundred and fifty horsepower torque would be getting on for 300 pound foot and have it absolutely smashed up and battered wheel trims missing looking just like a ropey zantia um and it would be a series two zantia so it'd be a, a bit ugly and um and then just go around annoying people uh, yeah i i would quite like to do i'm not going to do it now but i would be quite fun to do that um i'm exactly the same i do it and computers never charge people enough uh, yeah, you probably don't. I mean, like, I've started to get a bit better with it. I've started to think, no, you know what? Balls. I've My time is worth what it is worth. And I've, you know, I can do the jobs I'm doing on these cars because I've done it for so long and I've learnt my way. Therefore, I should be charging for it. But I'm not, I'm a bit of a socialist at heart. I'm not really, you know, to me, I'm kind of like, oh, we should all help each other out. Um, just living in a dream world, really. So, yeah, I don't like, I don't like taking money um i don't like taking money off people full stop really uh you know and that's why i like the channel memberships and thing on here are just voluntary it's just you know there's no obligation to do anything but people ask um and that's why they're cheap and they're never, never going to be high high amounts so uh i thought it was 160 break with the sr as well oh, it's 109 109 Rubbish, isn't it? Uh, would you say you are a sociable person? Any meetup plans? I'd love to visit you someday. Ooh, don't do that. Uh, when I finally pull my life around. I'm sure you'll pull your life around. I'm... Um, <laughs> if anyone who knows me at the moment, if anyone knows me and they're watching this, they're going <laughs> sociable. Um, I no, I, no, I'm. If I'm here, if I'm working, I, I mean, to a customer, I would be um, sociable and everything. But otherwise, if someone just walks in and starts talking to me, I'll just be annoyed and grumpy. I'll go away. I'm trying to do something, um, especially if they're salesmen. Um, but at a car meet, we had, we had Festival of the Island Exceptional the other day, and someone asked for a photo, which was just bizarre. I was like, well, how would you want a photo of me? Um, and and our, and our fella was there. I think it was a, a fella. 
and he took it and he was like, no, no, he doesn't like doing that sort of thing. He doesn't like. And I thought, actually, no, I'm be- that's a bit. I'm being a bit mean, you know. I think if I'm already at a car show, if I'm already at some event or something, and you're kind of in the spirit of it and you're talking to people, um, which I always seem to do, I always seem to be talking to everyone every time I go to a car show for someone who doesn't really chat with people. Um, but car shows, I think when you're in the environment, it's fine. So I don't mind. I don't. I, I'm probably fairly social. I can be approached um, at shows and things. It's just if I'm like, you know, you get people if you're at home and you get people messaging you all the time or um, people walk. I mean, no one's really bothered me here, but I rue the day someone does because it will really wind me up. Um, unless they're a channel member, and I'll be like, oh, okay, you are a channel member. I will grant you some of my time. Um, but it's it's basically because I can't deal with. I'm not very good socially, and I can't deal with people. I can't deal with multiple things at once. I'm quite like slow-minded and I, I can talk to one person but then if like two people are there um sometimes you get people like waiting to talk to you um and in, in citron circles i'll get it because if it's if you're at a citron show and it's bx people and they've got a bit a technical question or something they're hanging around to talk to you and i don't normally see them i'm very very bad that's the other thing i'm really bad at spotting people i'll just walk straight past people i know because i haven't seen them because i just i don't know what it is i just don't pick things up and uh, yeah, I don't see people waiting to talk to me. I'm I'm useless at all that sort of thing. And uh, to be honest, that, that's just the way it is. Um, so no, I haven't really got any plans to hold a social. If I held a social event, it would be it would be called the anti-social, um, naturally. But to be honest, I, I'm not really. I'm probably the sort of person who would just tag along to someone else's. I, I'd I'd say I'm going to organise something, and I never would. So um, maybe one day. Maybe one day, but uh, if Clement, well, if the SM's on the road, when the I say, I tell you right, when the SM's on the road and done, there will be a social for that. So, um, Mangualde FC is that? I don't know. Your statement about spending money on cars kind of rings true with something I say a lot. The moment you complain about the cost of a hobby is when you realise it's not the hobby for you. Very true. Got to sign off. Thank you, Larry Simon. Good to see. You. Good to speak to you. Um, would a load of specialist Citroen tools be of any use to you? Uh, a friend of mine has just bought a garage that specialises in them, and the tools come with it, and he has no use for them. Uh, very much so. Yeah, possibly. Depends what they are. Um, but yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, grand Granddad. Is that my granddad? He's dead. Must just be a different different granddad um some two cvs built in slough very true buying the fox probably seemed like a good idea at the time at the time i bought it um what it was i got excited because i saw i watched ian doing his uh that sounds dodgy i, I watched ian fox do uh driving fox Anne, or an old fox Anne video and you kind of go through those things. You go through those periods where you think, oh, I quite fancy that. And then like a month later, you've gone right off it. Um, and I just got the BX on the road. And I kind of fancy an adventure. And then, in fact, no, I hadn't even got the BX on the road. But I planned to get the BX on the road. And um, I hadn't, <laughs> the SM hadn't even gone on eBay at that point. And, uh, yeah, I, um, I agreed to it. Just as the... Uh, I can't even remember what year it was. Was it last year? Yeah, second year of lockdown or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah, I agreed to it. And then the SM came along and ended up buying the SM. And then there was loads of other stuff going on. And I thought, oh, I really shouldn't have taken that on. But I was going to use it as a company vehicle, like for time right and things. Um, and I thought if I had it as a courtesy car, it costs a lot of money to insure a courtesy car and everything like that. But if I had a Reliant Fox as a courtesy car, no one would want to drive it. Um, they wouldn't be seen dead in it, so no one would use it, and therefore it would be a very cheap courtesy car. Um, but as it was, I got it, I was excited, I got it back here, then I got the SM, and then I looked at the Fox and thought, why the hell did I buy that? Because it's just, there's no need for it, you can't, I can't even carry anything in it, it's tiny. The boot in the, the back at load bay in a Fox is the same as an S-Max, so it's like, it's, yeah, maybe marginally bigger. Um, with the seats up, that is. So yeah, I, I, in the end, it was just, it was a, a silly, pointless thing, and I lost money. There's no good outcome from it. So, well, I took the BX to Wales. That was fun, wasn't it? 
Um, Bristol, I've been at both Bristol City. This is more football talk. People hate football, which is going to be most people. Um, are going to be like, oh. So um, I would think Clement supports Rovers. Uh, whichever, which one's red and white? Whichever one's red and white. I can't do the blue one. Uh, got myself a C5X7 exclusive with the 2.7 as your C6. So very interesting. Any maintenance videos on the C6 in the future? Um, yeah, quite similar. This I don't think they've got AMVAR in the suspension, the C5s. Um, but yeah, the yeah the end. Oh, I think a lot of it is is similar underneath. Um, haven't really done much maintenance to be honest. Um, and probably probably doesn't do many miles. It's done more miles this year already than I thought it was going to. It's last MOT it was an one hundred and fifty five thousand, or just somewhere around there. And it's about to clip one sixty. So it's done more this year than any of the other cars I've got. So. Uh, Yeah, that's not exclusive to the Activa owners. Any high spec of a regular car owner does that. Yeah, but the thing with Activas is that the the owners think they're some. They, they honestly act like they're supercar slayers. Um, and like the Moose test, keep going back to the Moose test. And there's a Spanish channel, a video on YouTube that the Spanish channel's done. Where they've done an actual Moose test with the um, Activa. They've recreated it, and they basically come to the conclusion that it's an old car and old tires with no. Um, you know, old design tyres, not old, old, you know, actual tyres. Um, and it can't actually, I mean, some, some like Kia people carriers will get in, or SUVs will get in near it um, in the real world. But what well, I think what they did say, what they did conclude was that for what it was, it was awesome for its time and for what it could do, considering what it actually was at heart. They, it was massively impressive, so uh, they, they were quite, uh, I think they were quite um, praiseworthy of it, um, which they should be, but they're not supercar slayers. I mean, you could out-corner an Activa in a Saxo if you wanted to, it, because of weight and physics and, and grip and stuff like that, but to do everything, to have people in a car that's comfy and can corner flat and can cruise on the motorway, um, and be reliable, and have luggage in it, and everything else, then yeah, the Activa is hard to beat, to be honest with you. It's a shame we didn't get the V6 in the UK, although to be honest, the diesel would have made sense as well. Um, they were going to put the Activa system in the XM. It was a plan to do that, but I think they realised that it was pointless, because no one was buying XMs anyway, so if they made another version that cost £5,000 more, even less people would buy it. Um, so... Russ Wallace has got the exact same colour and spec as mine. He has, yes. And it's mint. So when I park next to him, I'll have a sign saying, after and before. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, we're all watching now. What, Ian, Ian's there, is he? Oh, I'm a long way behind on the comments. Wow. Okay. I'm going... And this is on the slow comment thing. The, the top comments only. Um, was just £700. Yes. I remember the sideways incident when following the Saxo. See, he did try to out-corner me in a Saxo in that Activa. And because there's not much in the way of communication between the car and the driver in one of those, you just have to put your faith, like all hydraulic Citroëns, you just put your faith in the car. You don't really have any feedback on what it's doing. you just like, you can do this, and you trust it. Um, and uh, he uh, ran out of talent, or the tyres ran out of grip, and he ended up 90 degrees. Um, with lift off oversteer, and I looked in the rear view mirror, and this Saxo left him for dead. And it, and it was, I could see it slide at 90 degrees, but it still wasn't leaning. <laughs> that was the best bit. It slid sideways flat, and the front bumper just kissed the barrio, just missed it. And um, he stopped driving like a cop after that, I think. So, um, I tried an Activa once, and the sensation of the suspension working while taking a motorway exit faster than normal was sensational. It is. Do I watch Formula One? And if you do, who is your who is your driver? Scott Walter. I do watch Formula One. Um, it's I prefer as a motorsport. I prefer BTCC. Um, I uh, I used to be hugely into BTCC back in the Super Touring days, um, and then I lost it. And then I've come back recently because my kids got into it. Um, and it's way better racing than Formula One. I mean, they're sprint races, aren't they? It's not, you know. But then Formula, as I said to one of my kids the other day, um, 
you know, it's better because it's sprint racing. Formula One's kind of long, t- long distance. Uh, and then he replied, and they're both they're twins who are quite young, massively into motorsport. And he replied, yeah, Formula One sprint racers, though. They're not as good as BTCC. And I thought, that's a very good point. And then the other one went, yeah, but the cars aren't designed for sprint racers. That's very true as well. They're not. They're big and they're made for longer distances. So, yeah. Um, Favourite driver in Formula One? I'm not Max or Lewis fan. I don't really like either of them. Um, I can't deny Max Verstappen is an insane talent. Um, I still like Alonso. I, I do like Alonso. I like Leclerc. Charles Leclerc. I was cheering him on for the title. I love Vettel. Said Vettel. Just as a man. Not really as a driver. Um, yeah, probably one of those three. So, um, Alonso's gone back. I don't know why he's going Aston Martin. He's gone backwards. So. Um, are the worn front tyres on your C6 Dunlops? Uh, no, they're some kind of ditch finder thing. They're not really anything... Uh, yeah, Dunlops are good. I rate Dunlops quite highly. Um, but no, the tyres on the C6 are just some cheap thing. So, um, Where are we at? My dream garage is mostly composed of Citroen 2CV, 15CV traction, DS23 EFI, BVM. That's manual, is it? Manual gearbox? I don't know. I'd want the semi-auto. Um, SM... Injection Electronic, mm, the catch fire. CX GTI Turbo, one and two. I've nearly knocked the cup over. Uh, XM V6 24 valve Mark One, yes. BX 16 valve Series One. What you mean, fate earlier one, not the Phase Two? Can't agree with that. Phase Two looks awesome. Um, Dantia V6 Activa Series One, yes. C6 V6 3 litre. I would be very interested to drive a C6 V6 3 litre, the petrol. I'd be very interested to try one. I can't imagine it would. I would imagine it would be a little bit gutless uh, compared to the, the turbo diesel or the twin turbo diesel. Um, but the smoothness would be crazy. I mean, the, the 2.7 is quite smooth for a diesel, but um, yeah, I would imagine the petrol one is crazy smooth. So, um, lack of interest in Reliant Foxes, your one and Hubnuts. Although he is asking way too much, saddens me. If I lived nearby, I would have bought both of them. I think they're great. Well, that's the, that's the good thing. You can, you know, it's 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 just a it's a subjective thing, isn't it? You know, what one person loves, someone else doesn't. And one of the things you've got to think, like when Ian went on about selling his, and everyone went nuts. Some channels on YouTube will buy cars specifically for YouTube. They'll, they'll whatever they do is because they think it will make great content. And I can tell you for a fact. Um, I mean, I, don't, I know him better now than I did before, but I've known him for quite a long time. Ian has always done what he does now. He buys and sells them. He just never keeps cars a long time. It was only ever the 2CV, as far as I remember. And now for there to be a lot of them that are kind of keepers. Um, I said this when he got Betty. I said, you're going to start like having trouble here because you've got cars. That you're saying you can't sell this, you can't sell that, you can't sell that. And you end up in that phase, that stage where you think, hang on, I can't sell anything. Um and the fox wasn't in that. And although everyone sort of cry wolf and, you know, cry wolf's the wrong term, but everyone gets upset when he talks about selling a car. It is his car and it's his money. And if he wants to sell it, he can sell it because he'll buy something else. Um, but was he asking too much? I don't know. I don't know the values on foxes. Um, I don't even know what he was asking for it, to be honest. But he's got his old sits up cheap. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... You could have come and got it if you, you could have bought mine. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, I liked, I, I, there were bits of it I liked. Um, but I just, one of those things where I got it and then I thought, why did I do that? So it's just, just the way it is. Um, there's no right or wrong. That's the beauty of it. There's no right or wrong. You are as right as I am. So Hubnut, who's that? Hubnut. <laughs> Sounds Mickey Mouse. Please do an up and down antisocial. Uh, Greetings, what's your thoughts on the 2.7 V6 diesel in the C6 after the big trip in France and its reliability, says Thanos. Bloody hell, Thanos. Um, 
well, I mean, in terms of reliability, it didn't break down. So uh, from that point of view, it's quite good, obviously. Um, the economy, the engine with well, the car makes a lot more sense on a run. Hugely so. Um, round town, the C6 is, is quite poor, actually. I wouldn't say it was great round town. Um, until you see a shop window and you look at it and you go, oh. um, but the engine on the motorway, fantastic. I mean, a lot of, you know, quite a bit of overtaking punch. Um, it, you can't really say what's the engine like, I suppose, in isolation, because the whole package that it's in, um, has to be taken into account. It works quite well. I, there are, it is flawed. I know some people have them remapped and apparently that maps out that lag they have when you go to pull away, which apparently is there. Um, as a kind of like a torque limiting thing to protect the gearbox. Um, but it really causes problems. I mean, I don't know if mine's worse than it should be because of the lazy gearbox. I, I, I need to drive another one, really. I need to drive one that's that's in good work and order. Um, but it's, it is a pain. It is quite quite a pain when you're trying to pull away and, you know, I get beaten off the lights by Honda Jazzes. Oh, dears, and Honda Jazzes beat me around here. And then... As soon as it gets rolling, you get up to about 15 mile an hour and then the boost comes in on both of the turbos and you lurch forward and the front end goes up in the air and you shoot off down the road looking like a Muppet. Um, so you just learn to try and pull away. I think there's also an element of it where it's not that it's going really slowly. It's just that because you ask a certain amount of it and it doesn't respond, everything feels like it's taken an age to work. And I think maybe if you just push your foot down in kind of in line with what it's doing, it wouldn't feel so slow. I keep trying to do that, but no, it, it's as a package. The C6 in France, it it was phenomenal. It was fantastic. It was doing 42 miles to the gallon. Never had a peep out of it through Paris. The traffic. I mean, we, you know, you're queuing in traffic, and it's 36 degrees um, in city centres and things like that. And I, yeah, it, I absolutely loved it. I loved the car even more when I got back. Um, so yeah, plenty of good things to say about it. Do I want to buy another Fox? No. Nope. Um, or an old set? No. Nope. Um, I quite like old. I mean, well, no. I, 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 I can't get over the old set's looks. I, they're just too ugly for me. I can't. I'm not into looks, as you can tell. Um, but I'm. Yeah, they they look like a, a, an even uglier Visa, and a Visa is a car that fell out the ugly tree. Um, although the GTIs do look very cool, I do like the GTIs, but I like the. I'm very interested in the old sets though, not in not to purchase, not to purchase, um, but yeah, just from the engineering point of view and and the fact they exist, um, which I suspect is the reason um, that you got them as well. Um, to me, just simply looks of a car aren't a high consideration. They're kind of midway somewhere it's the whole package it's the whole thing um so uh yeah i think they're, i think they're fascinating but no thank you so there is one known sm v8 made using two blocks welded together well that would be a v12 wouldn't it um as an easier route do you think the shamal v8 would fit since it came from the bi turbo v6 and that came from the sm v6 bi turbo v6 is based on the basic architecture of the SM V6, but it's quite different. Um, the closest thing you'd get, I mean, the, the V8 SM, uh, it's a red one, I think. Um, and I think the engine in that was more closely related to the to the Indy. Uh, I don't know for sure. Obviously, there's that big myth that SM V6s are a V8 with two cylinders locked off. It's not true. They're not. It's it is a ground up design. Um, obviously, they would have taken, you know, the components that they already had. They would have designed the engine around those. The tooling was made for ninety degree. That's not ninety degrees. Ninety degree V8 engines. Um, so they made a ninety degree V6, which is not ideal, and it's an odd fire V6. So it's um, it's a funny old thing. Um, so they would have used their know-how and their available tooling and everything from the V8 line, and there may be components that are shared, but the engine is an all-new design. And I don't, I don't know the V8 SM. I'd be interested to know how they got around the gearbox with it. it. Must have a very short gearbox, but 
yeah, the VASM, I think it's an engine that's largely based on the Indy, with probably with a custom um, crankcase and, and whatnot. But uh, I think it, I think the V6 is fine in it, to be honest. I think the V8 would have been too much. So um, it was probably for the Americans, wasn't it? It was probably like, oh, the V6 is a little engine to them. It was tiny. Um, so, yeah, they like their V8s. They probably thought about the American market. Um, are Series 2's anti is that bad? I know they rust more than Series One, but I don't. I think they look so much better. I don't like the look of a Series Two's anti. The front, it, the, the front of it looks like a boat. It, I, I, I don't think there are many cars where the facelift looks better than the original. Um, the only one you might argue could be the DS, um, because it's got the Robert Opron front end, and he is a genius. He was a genius. Um, but I think that said, I, I don't know if I. I think I might prefer the earlier DS anyway. Um, but no one's Xantia, no, I definitely prefer the early Xantia. I think the, the nicest looking Xantia you can have would either be an Activa or um, a very early VSX, the really early one with a badge on the bonnet, um, the, the Chariots of Fire TV advert Xantia. Um, I think they're quite handsome cars when they came out. I know a lot of people don't, but I think they I think they were. If you look at what was around, it looks way better than a Mondeo. A Mondeo is just like a blob compared to a Xantia. Um, and they had like Cavalier Mark III was out when the Xantia came out, so um, I think they were good looking cars, but uh, I just don't like the Series 2. I don't like the rounded bumpers, I don't like you know the white lights in the back, I think it all just ruins it a little bit. But they were just trying to freshen it up, weren't they? So they're probably better cars, uh, no doubt about that. They probably are better cars. Good evening from a champion of social ineptitude. <laughs> Hello, Chris. The Chris the Snail Driver, I'm guessing you've got a 2CV. I must say, I do love the Citroen TVR crossover, quite an interesting mix. Uncle had a TVR Tasman, I think, the wedge one. Yep, that is the Tasman. Well, the Tasman, if it's got a V6, so if it's up to about 1984, it's a Tasman. After that, it's just started to be bad, it's just 280Is. Um, bloody terrifying, yet cool. Wouldn't it be terrifying if it was a Tasman, because it would have had a 2.8 V6 in, and they barely got enough grunt to pull the skin off a of rice pudding um i think they get overtaken by their own shadow sometimes but uh with a v8 and they can be a bit more leery um and for the time to be fair the v6 had enough enough grunt uh yeah no I, the tvr citroen crossover citrons are the, are the passion citrons are the kind of the play and tvrs are the work so but i as i said before in other videos I think there's there's a, a surprising amount of similarity between them in terms of the way... That, I mean, the cars are very different, but the philosophy behind them is very... Well, the philosophy behind them in some ways is very different. In other ways, it's not. The TVR were very much a kind of, we'll do it our way, thanks, which is what Citroen used to do. Um, and they are maligned by people who don't really understand them and don't know them, and they've got reputations that aren't really um, justified. So... Yeah, I think there are quite a few similarities. They're kind of one of the unloved ones that, if you're in on it, you know. And I think Citroens... I think the thing I've noticed with Citroens, I think they're getting more popular. I think the older ones are definitely getting more popular now. People are starting to think... I think cause cars are getting quite boring now, and they're all the same, which is with different badges on. People are looking at the back catalogues and thinking, wow, actually, Citroen made some pretty funky stuff. And, you know, um, so I think if you want one... You get one now because I think the values are just going to go up. I think they, so people are suddenly going to realise, hang on, those are quite fun. Um, and JM did a video a while back on a DS and he said that he, although he loves supercars and things and ragging it around with hair on fire, he drove a DS and he said, actually, I can see I can see the logic in that um, because you do just sit back and you one arm on the wheel and you just chill. You just glide down the road and that's motoring as well. You don't have to be going around fast. You can just have as much fun looking at the scenery, gliding along on a cushion of air. Um, because it's funky and it's interesting and it's different to what we're used to. So, um, yeah, I think there's, although TVRs and Citroens are very different, I think what attracts me to them are probably not as different as it looks. So, um, I wanted to, Steve B, just wanted to say what a great channel you have. Thank you. I didn't actually, I don't know how I've ended up with, with a, successful channel because i would call it a lot more successful than i thought it was going to be saw you comment a moment ago that you do not consider yourself to be very sociable 
isn't this now you being sociable or just an excuse for not actually working on an SM but putting out some content? Um, this is fine because I'm on my own talking to a phone. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. In some ways, I am. I'm getting better. I used to be quite bad. Um, I am slowly getting better. But I, I will have a habit. At some point, this channel will implode because I'll say something offensive um, and get cancelled or something because I've just got a. My filter isn't the strongest. Um, I get into a lot of skirmishes online because. Well, I'm better than I was, but I used to just. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd just say what I was thinking. And it is what I'd say if it was face-to-face. -face. It's just perhaps it comes across differently. So, um, yeah, no, if you see me at a car show or something, I'll be all right. I won't be like, oh, go away, you know. Um, but as I say, like, Ian's told me before that he's had people messaging, like, I'm in your neighbourhood, can I come and see you? No, because you get rocks thrown at you from the window. So, <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah, in, in many ways, I probably am getting better. Um, hello, waiting with bated breath to see headlining Mark 2.5 as I've just got the same job to do my scenic. I think you're the wrong channel, mate. I haven't done my S uh, my um headline. I've got it actually. This is fiberglass because it's, it makes it light, which means the center of gravity is reduced. Everything is engineering on a DS, and this is glued to it, and it's quite loud and I think when it rains it's going to be like sitting in a conservatory so I'm probably going to try and sound deaden this a bit more somehow um, but yeah I've got to take this off because the roof's got to come off so I'll have to peel this off and no doubt this will all get ripped and destroyed but if you look Carly there's no hole above the um, rear window there so um, will the SM be done before Prince William becomes king very unlikely. Um, Neil Bennett says, can we have some sessions on the Activa, please? If not, will you plan in the future? Um, leave it with me. I have... I am... <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to go into massive detail, but there's, there's you know... I, I have an idea... I mean, I want to explain... I want to do a series of videos explaining how the suspension systems on each of these cars work and start with the most basic one which would be the bx probably the mark one bx is the most simple version of this system you can get um, and then gradually work it up through the more complicated ones and be like right now i've told you how that one works remember that right now we're going to add this thing to it um but the first one i'll do would be one on the brakes how the brakes work and why the brakes are different and that will be on a bx i have a bx 16 valve here that i'm going to do that on a certain tomato um, will be the car that I do that on, and that will be filmed sometime next week, um, because I've got to bleed the brakes on it, so I might as well show everybody why Citroen brakes are the way they are, why everyone's like, why'd you put your foot on the pedal when you go through the windscreen, because they are completely different to normal brakes, it's not even that they're just better, they're, they're, they're complete, they work completely differently, so, on the hydraulic side, anyway, um, so, yeah, and then eventually there'll be one on the Activa, about how the Activa system works, and why, Really, I mean, you could stretch it and say it's active, it's suspension, but it's not really. The Activa doesn't have active suspension. It has active anti-roll. Suspension is kind of-ish when it's on auto mode, but it's stretching it. Um, and the closest to active suspension is the C6, which is pretty different again. So there'll be, yeah, I will do videos on these, but I, as I say, I just have a lot going on. So the ideas are there. Um, another reason for himself to keep milking the SM he's pulling a hard bargain I'm not milking it, I haven't filmed anything on that for ages how come we haven't seen your red BX Valva on the channel yet says Bray um, because the red BX is I haven't put every car on the channel and, and to be honest like that car is in my garage buried under stuff and that car will probably be a car where I think, actually, now that one is just for me. Um, because I will have other BXs in and around. If I am if I haven't got one here that I own, um, then I've got, I'll have another one. I mean, I've got a 16, I've got two 16 valves here at the moment, aren't mine. Um, so there'll always be one on hand. 
Um, and I kind of think like the one I've got is I've had that for. I, I'm never say never. I might change my mind, but at the moment it's kind of like that one's just more for me. Um, I've had that since I was 20, and I'm 39 now. So, um, and I've you know that, that kid that car took my kids home from the hospital. It was at my wedding. Um, yeah, it's it's been. It's been there all the way through, so it's not. It is to me what Ellie is to Ellie is to Ian, um, but it's. I mean, these work as well. Um, that's why it's not on the road. It, it, you know, I, I opted to stop using it, so uh, so it wouldn't deteriorate as quickly. So um, yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe never say never, but at the moment I've got enough other stuff to be doing. So. Kimmy was the main man in F1. He drove Citroen. He did. He did. And when he, he crashed his C4 WRC and they said, uh, Kimmy, what happened? And he's like, uh, I crashed. And rolled over. Kimmy was the man. I, I think he's fantastic. Um, William will be lucky if he starts after the King George coronation. It's true. It's fair. Fave Hubnut car was the Honda SMX, which is like an S Max, but not. Greetings from Warsash. Oh, hello. Oh, bloody hell, that's close. Um, uh, -duh -duh. Peugeot 607 had a terribly inert gearbox too. Peugeot 607 may have had the same gearbox, to be fair. I assume the gearbox on the C6 has adaptive learning. Have you tried a soft reset? What? Soft reset? What? Unplug the battery for 10 minutes? I've tried a... A Diag box reset. Um, oh, Jay Spears, that's very kind. Thank you. Super thanks. I love my Xantia 1.9 turbo diesel SX M Reg. So comfy and a great car for motorways. Um, yeah, I mean, what car magazine I used to read that a lot when I was young because I was excited and um, they loved it. They, they Every time the Xantia TD was in a group test, it just used to clean up. Until the 406 came along. And then they basically said, although the 406 isn't quite as smooth, it's nearly as smooth and it handles better. And it's, they thought, better looking. Mm. Mm, yeah, maybe. 406 was a handsome car. Um, I suppose it was just a bit newer. Um, and they used to judge on things like badge appeal. Crap like that. So, yeah, the Xantia TD used to clean up. They were good cars. Um, not as economical as everyone makes out. I mean, I struggle. I've had a couple. I struggled to get 40 to the gallon out of them, to be honest. But they were just good all-rounders. Um, if I didn't have... Oh, I've already over the outfits. Early Xantia was definitely a classy piece of design. Though I always thought it looked best as an estate. Um, respectfully disagree. Um, the estate wasn't bad. But yeah, the I think the um, no, I think the hatch was better looking. So, um, so it would be GD Man. I can't even pronounce that man. I got pulled up on my pronunciation on French places the other day. I can barely speak English. Uh, GD Mangulay Mangalald, as in Grupo des. Portivo de Mangaloud. I will check it out. Sorry, missed the start. Psycho 63. I answered one of your questions. Yours was one of the ones I answered. I can't remember what it was. Tom Carr is an official up and downer. Welcome, Tom Carr. If you see other people's badges are different colours to yours, it's because the longer you are a channel member, your badges change colour to reflect your time on the channel. Um, good morning from tomorrow in Australia. Wow, yeah. Uh, do I think that the old school Citroen and pre-GM Saab are similar? Says Michael... I can't even pronounce your surname, I'm sorry. Mikhail, is it? No. Oh, I can't even see. No, I'm not even going to do the uh, em embarrassment of trying to pronounce your name. Um, do I think they're similar? Yeah, yeah, in conception, yeah, and in the way that the the engineers kind of led everything. Um, I mean, like with the DS, one of the main guys who designed it, you know, Firmino Bertoni, 
with an I, not with an E. Um, he was the chief designer, but Andre Lefebvre, who was the chief engineer, if you like, was also involved in the design, and he was an engineer. So the car was designed around engineering principles, and I think you probably get that with Saab as well. Um, they probably said, no, the best way to do it is this, so we shall do that, and then tell the stylists to deal with it. Um, I don't, for me, Saab's never the best looking cars. Um, I think they're, they're just an acquired taste, but they were more function over uh, form. Um, whereas the Citroen, I think, in their in their glory days, um, what I would class as glory days, I think they could pull off the, the function and the form. I mean, you look at a DS and a CX, and GSs were really good looking when they came out. I mean, compare them to what, what could you buy as a GS rival? A Cortina? No, it wouldn't even be that. Be what segment would that be? Escort? Hillman Minx or something like that? And we could get this GS, it's like sleek, you know. Um so yeah, I think um yeah, no, I definitely see similarities with, with, with proper Saabs, as I would say. I had a GM Saab, and um, which I actually I did think was a very good looking car from nine three saloon. It wasn't a very good car, really, but I liked it. It was likable. Um and, uh, and actually, I thought it was a good-looking car, so... Um, I have a C5 X7 2.0-litre HDI. The lag is almost entirely transmission. I was monitoring the boost, which goes up as soon as I push the accelerator, with the transmission in sport. No lag. Um, well, in mine, it doesn't matter what mode it's in. So, uh, I would say... Um, a theater, there's a channel called Adventures in Rust. There's a guy I know, I've mentioned it before, and he's Chris... Um, and he's mental, um, but he knows loads about automatic transmissions, and he's taken those boxes apart, and he's got a C5, which he's got that box on it, and a version of it. And he will be able to answer more questions than I can about those gearboxes. But from, I think he was one of the people who suggested that the, the torque on the C6 is restricted in first gear when you pull away, which is when you've got the most amount of kind of fight back going through everything. And... Um, the uh, yeah, the torque is restricted to kind of protect the transmission, and obviously once you've got inertia behind you and you're moving, the torque isn't such an issue. But where it makes its peak torque so low down, you're asking like you know three hundred and what well, three hundred and twenty five pound foot out the engine, but once it's gone through the gearbox, what gets put out to the wheels ends up being six hundred or something like that, five six hundred, um, and the gearbox is having to multiply that. So it's doing a lot of work, and I'm pretty sure they're saying that the engine, basically, if the revs are, you know, if it knows what gear it's in and everything, it will restrict its its output. And some people have said they've had their C6s remapped, um, in some ways for more power, but also to try and overcome that. And some people have overcome it. So whether mine is a is a characteristic of the car and it is a torque limiting thing, or whether it's broken. Uh, I don't know yet. I need to drive other one. I need to drive another one. Sorry, because um, I haven't. I've only ever driven mine. Um, but uh, I should really go and visit Chris because you just throw him the keys and he'll have a go and tell me whether he thinks it's right or wrong. Um, it's very, very dim weird. So uh, I, I'm not the gearbox in the C6 ain't quite right, and the suspension is not quite right. Um, I've heard so many conflicting things. Again, I've heard I had one guy who was in Citroen PR um, or marketing or something when the C6 first came out. There was a certain test route they took the journalists on, and there's a road they wouldn't let them drive down because the cars were doing that so much that they would have said horrible things about it. Um, so yeah, and it does do that. And the ironic thing with the C6 is it's, it actively tries to counter itself doing that. The suspension actively tries to stop itself doing that. It's the only Citroen that does. Um, and yet it does it worse than most of them. So I think my, yeah, I'm going to get my, one of the videos I'll do, I'm thinking of taking the C6 off the road next month and I might take all the spheres off and send them away for pressure testing and regassing. Cause apparently if you lose a couple of bar out of some of the spheres, you can really screw it up. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look, but, um, there will be more C6 content. I need to find out how Ian broke it. So, um, I think you should boost an XU10 and put it in a, in a BX estate. XU10 iron block, too heavy. Best engine for a BX is a 16 valve engine. And if I was going to do an engine conversion on a BX, it would be a V6. 
Um, because I have got a V6 engine and an automatic gearbox, so I'm gonna have sitting around spare. And I thought, that fit in a BX. No, stop it, stop it, stop it. So, even oh, hello, Stu. A local. You chatted for hours at our Brooklyn social. People loved it. People were just humouring me. Um, or B16 Turbo AX GT5. I know that works. That's the Honda B16 Turbo Charge and an AX. No engine. I, I realise there's an ir irony here that I'm talking. I'm going to say that the engine you put in a car has to be from that family of cars. As someone who has a Saxo engine and a Hillman Imp. But there is a tenuous link there. PSA. Buying Roots. No, buying Chrysler, who bought Roots. Um, no, I think an AX. I've always wanted to build an AX with a Saxo VTS lump in it. And then do it up like Citroen had made it. To much try and make it look as factory as I can. Um, I've always wanted to do that, but I think I'll probably skip that stage, to be honest. Because I've got a fair bit to do here. So, um, And I'm sure the Imp, to be honest, Hilda, uh, would be more fun than the AX would end up. So... I think I shall probably just stick with that. Um, I love the sound. I'm, I'm a long way behind again. I love the sound of rain on roof. Heading to bed. Busy weekend ahead. Cheers, Carly. Um, have you seen a photo of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip in a convertible SM? Seen it. I shared it. Um... Is Hilda still in the doghouse? Any thoughts about what to do with her next? Uh, fix it. I think, to be honest, now that now that Clement is here, um, yeah, it'll just be a case of trying to fix it and prevent further issues from happening. Because although uh, I think a lot of the issues may have been down to the fact I was hooning it around a track, um, the sort of problems it had, I suspect I would have had those on the road eventually. Uh, even though I managed 2,000 miles without issue. Um, or two and a half nearly it's not to say that it wouldn't have come so I think there are things I can do to try and um, give the gearbox an easier time so that's what I'll try and do um, I'm probably not going to try and convert it to run something else because that time would be better spent on this or on the SM or on the TVR as well So because um, none of them are on the road so uh, yeah the time would be better spent there and, and I did like it with the imp gearbox the gear ratio is very very wrong but the gear change was great. It felt like an imp. Um, and if I put something different in it, I'll have to modify it even further. And I kind of like it. As it, as it drove, it was driving great. So I shall probably do that. Um, how do we help you bump up to USA numbers of subscribers so you have the funds to really bring your cars to fruition as the SM will need a cool 20 grand or more to help it? Um, <laughs> uh I don't really do it for the numbers. I don't really think about numbers, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You don't have to do anything. You just watch. If you watch and you enjoy it and you like it, as long as people who... My subscriber versus non-subscriber ratio, because I have started looking at the numbers a little bit, has improved. Um, it's now 50-50, pretty much, So, which I think is quite good. Um, yeah, if you're liking and subscribing and watching and being supportive, that's what you've got to do, you know. If people are, if people want to find it, I'm sure they'll find it. Um, it's never going to be a massive channel because I'm not, you know, I know, I, I've, I've seen threads. There's a thread on Piston Heads about people discussing automotive bloggers. And it's painful reading some of it. It really is. People moaning about production values and stuff. And you just think, oh, that's going to suck the life out of it. Because the thing is... And, and Ian will back this up if he's still awake, um, is that people who do this, like, it's not being filmed for the effect. Like, these cars are actually being worked on. <laughs> this is actually real. It's, you know, the C6 really did go around. For, it's not just a story. It really did go to France on holiday last minute. I really have bought this. Um, yeah, it's all real. So, you, 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 you know, the main thing is you get the job done. And then you just film it along the way. So the production value is never going to be amazing. But if you can bring people along and show people something, they enjoy it, great. Um, so, yeah, the numbers are never going to be massive. I'm not... They they already are, actually. I mean, I've, I've never thought they would be what they are now. So, um, yeah, I, I... It just is what it is. I don't, I don't have any plans. I don't push. I don't promote. Whatever. You know, I'm happy to go with it as it is. 
if it stays like it is now forever, great. Not a problem. So, um, Mercedes used a version of the Citroen suspension with, with coil springs instead of gas-filled spheres. Isn't that just normal suspension? Mercedes did actually use um, a type of the suspension in the back of some of their estate cars, and they didn't license it from Citroen because they changed some silly little detail and they got out of it. Whereas when Rolls-Royce did it, and Range Rover Sports used a similar setup to the Activa, um, they licensed it, they paid Citroen a fee. And some of the, so the, the Rolls-Royces really do just have um, Citroen hydraulics, you know, pretty much. Um, whereas the Mercedes was like subtly different, but also probably not quite as good because no one ever, you know, no one ever goes on about how well they ride. So, um, but yeah, the Rolls Royces certainly float like a Citroen, so they still run on LHM. Well, I think if you buy the fluid from Rolls Royce, it's called something else and it's really expensive, naturally. Early start tomorrow, Rich, gotta go, gotta drive to France three times. Don't break down. Um, yeah, cheers. Yeah, as I've been on here a long time. Luckily, the time isn't an issue because I've already eaten and stuff, so it's not a problem. Um, but I won't be here forever. So, oh god. Uh, well, I haven't got an early start anymore because kids' football games got cancelled over the weekend. So, um, I have such a Mercedes. It has a spring and a sphere per side. Oh, okay. I'll have to look into that. Um, disappointing seats in the four. My, I'm so far behind again. Uh, is it true that the 406 Coupe was initially for the Xantia and Citroen turned it down? Um, doubtful, because the 406 Coupe was a Pininfarina design and Citroen used Bertone. So, um, but I think there was a Coupe prototype of the Xantia, but the more likely scenario is that Peugeot said, no. um, oh, I got, I disconnected and reconnected. Um, hey dude from tomorrow, give us the lottery numbers. Am I tomorrow and you're yesterday? You must be in the States. How was the Clements ignition? Is it... What? Is it zero... Zero... Th gear? I'm not sure, sorry. You'll probably try again because I'm miles behind. Uh, if a Ferrari appeals to people who like speed and a BMW appeals to someone with an ego bigger than Jupiter, would you say a Citroen appeals to someone who likes design? Um, no, not now. Uh, I think they probably appeal to people who want a cheap car. Um, I suppose the DS3 kind of went in for some of the mini buyers, didn't it? Um, old, old Citroens probably appeal to people from an engineering point of view, I would think. But with an engineering with flair. Citroen's definitely used to be engineering with style. And then they probably just went a little bit less on the style and kept the engineering going. And then they lost their way a bit. And then they become a bargain basement version of Peugeot. And then they started finding it back again. So like the C4 when that came out. Quite funky looking C6 obviously. Um, I don't even know what they are now. What they sell to be honest. I couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know what many new cars... Uh, um, no, I wouldn't say they were for style. I mean, B you wouldn't call a BX stylish, would you? I love them. You wouldn't call it stylish. Interesting. But mm, I wouldn't... I don't know. Maybe, maybe in comparison to the rivals of the time. But um, I think, yeah, I think they're more for the engineering, to be honest. Um, Citroen, so... Adventures and Rust is an awesome channel. It is. It is. Lots of swearing... A very Bristolian guy um, and buses. So, oh, Hubnut's gone. That was ages ago, I suspect. Night. Uh, although not one I can watch with the kiddos in earshot. Yeah, Chris is blue. Um, bought a GS220, 1220 club, new for many years, far too many years ago. Considered an Alpha said to be the alternative. Yes, Rupal Street near Waterloo. Is oh have I caught up? Oh I think I might have caught up. Rupal Street near Waterloo is a sort of nineteenth century. Yeah I know Rupal Street. It's got you know there's a BX on there. The two BXs. There's a DS. There's a DS Safari. There's an SM. 
and there's a traction occasionally. The BX that's there, there's a BX there, um, the black one, K995 something, was a, that is a hurricane, so it should be green, but it's black because it was ordered new, apparently by, I've heard either an actress who was in, potentially in Shaun of the Dead, or a counsellor, one or the other who wanted a black GTI and Citroen said sorry we haven't got any left because it's getting ditched and replaced by the Xantia and they offered to um, re-spray them a leftover Hurricane GTI so that is a black BX GTI Hurricane and being that there are only three BX GTI Hurricanes left pretty much um, yeah that's quite a rare one so uh, I don't know who sprayed it I don't know if it was re-sprayed at Citroen or the dealer arranged it um, it hasn't got the stickers on it or anything, so imagine the dealer might have had it done. They often restrict the torque on the TF eighty SC gearboxes. I think the box is rated four hundred and fifty newton meters max. Yeah, probably. That's probably what it was. Um, oh, oh, and, there, and there's me thinking that I'd caught up. Okay, uh, right. Oh, I'm not. I'm not doing too bad. Welcome to Stockholm and go for a spin. I'd like to go to Sweden actually. In my all original DS21 Palace BVH, I'd like to drive one of those. Watching at work, Rich, keeping me entertained. You should do some work. M um, HQ. We spoke at F F. Oh, festival is exceptional. You were very kind with your time as well as being a pleasure to meet. Oh, Matthew. Tibbs GTE, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about Ron Swanson. Um, C6 petrol owner. You've got a C6 petrol? Okay. Have to say the C6 transmission is pretty good. In sport mode, how are your downshifts? I have quick shifts and amazing engine braking for an auto. But the different, it feels like you've got a dodgy one. The difference you've got there is that the, the C6 petrol doesn't have much torque compared to the diesel. The diesel's got a lot more grunt and a lot lower down. So the gearbox has a much harder time dealing with it. Um, the, the petrol is, is, you'd have to rev it to get the torque. And by the point you're revving it, your car's already moving. So it's not the standstill. Um, so they probably find the engine mapping doesn't have the same limitations that the diesel does. The diesel makes something like 320 pound feet. At, it's like 1900 revs or something silly like that. And you're asking a gearbox there to have a car that weighs pretty much two tonnes go from doing nothing to hauling it, potentially with 325 pound foot going through the um, torque converter. So that's probably why it limits it. Whereas the petrol at 1900 revs will be making 150 pound foot, 160, something like that. It's a lot less. Um, so the petrol does more of its work higher up the rev range. Um, but of course by that point you're already moving so there's not as much load on the gearbox so that'll be why the gear the petrol is doesn't have the same issue um, in fact I always looked at the, the um, performance figures and thought the petrol I know the petrol I mean I know people who've driven the petrol the petrol is a fair bit slower than the diesel but the performance figures are roughly the same might be because the petrol just gets going straight away whereas the diesel hangs around waits waits for its like gearbox to you know, release itself and then surges off and catches it up. Um, who knows? I need to drive a petrol one. Um, has anyone asked my age yet? No, I think I told everyone, but um, but the income from the subscribers will help the SM for sure, as it is an expensive restoration compared to simple Citroen mechanicals. Yeah, they are. No, the parts are horrendously expensive for the SM, ridiculously expensive. Um, which is one of the reasons it's not really progressing much at the moment. But the stuff I need to do on it first, it's just cost of metal. It's welding. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. the income from subscribers is good. I need to sort Patreon out. Everyone keeps asking me about Patreon. I need to do that. Um, but, I, again, I don't think about the income from this as being something to rely on, it's just, it's a bonus, um, you know, it's, this, the, the income off YouTube won't scratch what an SM will cost to restore, it won't even get near it, um, and I kind of, 
I, I tend to save up by, you know, I'll get one car and I'll do that up and I'll eventually I'll sell it and I'll take the money from that and put it into another car and kind of build them up as little savings accounts, you know, and because my time is the thing I can put into them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, S, the, the SM eventually is going to need probably 10 grand worth of paint job and, um, well, engine bits, if I'm lucky, about two and a half, I think. It's going to need new valves, obviously. Because it's a three litre, everything's more expensive. Um, it, yeah, but the main problem with the SM is there's the body. It's very rusty, so that's the first thing I've got to do is strip it all down, flip it upside down and do the floor. But I don't want to strip it all down yet because I won't remember how it goes back together. And working on things like this will help me remember it. And it'll get to the point that I am now where if someone gave me a TVR Chimera in bits, I could put it back together. And I want to be like, not, I won't be as that familiar with an SM, but I want to be along those lines. So, um, I missed your question that you, you a call. Yeah. I ask it again, mate. Oh, Cause the, it's really difficult on here to keep up with questions. I would call a BX stylish. I own two. I love them. We, well, yeah, but I own two BXs. Therefore they can't be stylish cause I own them. So it's unfortunately, do I like the 900 convertible? I'm asking because they really appeal to me. Um, not really. I don't mind them. I, res I respect them, but I've never really warmed that much to them. I'm not really massively into... I can't, the only Saabs I quite like are the... I don't mind the 99 Turbo and the, the old 96 and the old two-stroke stuff. They're quite interesting, but other than that, not really... VX Defo stylish rep car of its choice in its day. <laughs> only by about only nineteen eighty eight. Only when the turbo diesels came out. Up until then, they were all, they were doing okay, but they weren't they weren't getting anywhere near Cavaliers and, and Montegos are out selling them. Um, don't forget the BX got very dated very quickly because the styling of it was was it was designed in the seventies. And the Sierra, for once, Ford came along and actually changed the game, which they don't tend to do. They just tend to do the same, you know, they used to play it safe all the time. But the Sierra came out and it kind of did move the game on a little bit and everything started to look up a little bit redundant. And the BX dated really quickly, I think. And, it's, you know, it's um, they started tacking spoilers onto the normal models and, and things, but it did date in some ways quite badly. So, yeah, I think... Um, yeah, probably stylish to some people. Yeah, it's a subjective thing, isn't it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have put them down as a stylish car. That's just my opinion, and I, you know, I love them. So, um, do I have an Instagram account? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's up and down vids. It's, I, I should put it. I should put the link on the main page. There's a Twitter one. Um, but yeah, th there is. Just Google, just search up and down vids, it should come up. The BX is stylish in my opinion because it's peak 80s coolness in my opinion. Yeah, but the 80s weren't cool, were they? That's the thing. The 80s are kind of like a bit tacky. And I am a child of the 80s. Um, peak 80s coolness? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely up there. It's a very 80s car, isn't it? Um, even though it was designed in the 70s. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, you, preaching to the choir. I love them. I live BXs, and you know, most people know that. You don't see anything like as many on here as 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 I live. You don't see as much BX content on here as I have in my life every day. Put it that way. Um, but uh, that's, that's the car I grew up with, and the car I'll die with. And we, you know, I own one on the on the day I croak it. Um, so yeah, I think I just don't think they were particularly stylish. Really, I think, you know, when you compare what came before, CXs, when they came out, GSs, I think, I think the SM, the, the XM, sorry, I think looks more stylish. Um, but I don't think the BX looks stylish or the or the ZX. Xantia, yeah, when it came out, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. That's just, it's just personal opinion. So. Um, BX looks great. Except maybe the estate, not so much. Yeah, the estate does. Well, it looks like a homemade car because it was the BX estate was a design submitted by Julier. 
um, in France to Citroen saying, hey, let us build you an estate because they wanted some repeat work, not just sports cars and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so they actually submitted the design and got the tender to do it and built them. And they were converted hatchback shells. So they actually are um, those things tacked on the back. Um, is there a e is is there e torque converter on C six petrol? Does that mean is there an electric torque converter on C six petrol, or is that meant to be a torque converter? Um, yes, there is a torque converter um, because it's a standard automatic gearbox, um, and I can't think of many cars that don't have one these days. You've probably got some other system of doing it, but yeah, gearbox is the same as far as I know. It's it's still an ASIN box. Um, but, uh, yeah, those V6 engines quite often have auto boxes on them. And that V6 engine in the C6, petrol, is, is not a new engine. It came out in 1995, I think. So, when it comes to painting the SM, eventually, do you think you'll go for the original white or take creative liberties with it? Mm, that's a secret. Um, you'll have to wait and see. Although it's a very long time away, so you'll have to wait a long time and see. Um, you were asking Kim. Okay, yeah, sorry, it's really difficult to. Um, yeah, it's it's a nightmare trying to keep up the comments. But um, any thoughts on the Zara? Love or thoughts on the Zara? Uh. They're competent cars. Uh, the Zara VTS is an underrated hot hatch. Um, looks a bit pants, but the Zara um, was one of the best looking uh, rally cars. The Zara uh, S2000 kit car looks awesome. I've got a model of one. Um, the road cars... I have a 306 all day long. I have a 306. It's light. It looks a lot better than a Zara. It's lighter. Zara's a bit more modern, slightly more toys. Zara has uh, the heated rear screen is on the end of the wiper stalk. So you just do that, and there's a little telltale light that comes on on the dashboard. That's a brilliant idea. Um, yeah, there's a couple of things on the Zara. I mean, I've had a couple. I had a turbo diesel. I had a VTR coupe in Helios. Um, yeah, they're, they're good cars. It's just nothing exciting in the slightest. So, um, yeah, I can't. I saw a couple in France. Yeah, the VTS is decent. Um, a good hot hatch. Un uh, uh, underrated hot hatch as well. They, they handle well. There's a lot of trick bits on them. And they're quick. They're quicker than the paper figures suggest. So, yeah, they're decent. Um, I think a road trip around French scrapyards looking for odd parts for your gems would be great to see. I very much agree, Psycho 63, but I, uh, time and money, um, because money is time. So I'd love to do a French road trip in a, you know, I mean, I'll, it's difficult. You set out, you have all these ideas about something you're going to film and then you go out and you go and you think, oh, I'm going to do that. I'll film this. I'll film that. And when you get there, I have this kind of thing where I just freeze up and just go, uh, I don't know if I can be bothered. And it's it's quite difficult. So to plan a trip around doing that, I have to have someone with me, spurring me on or like sparring, you know. Um, it's twenty two oh eight. Jesus, is it twenty two oh eight? Oh, it's twenty two fourteen. God, um, I am going to go soon. Just after I type the message, you're talking about Saab BX. Turbo diesels, do you carry a particular set of tools for each vehicle in a tool roll box, emergency fluids, etc.? No, not really. Uh, some of us even think the Moltica is stylish. It's subjective. There is no right or wrong, apart from with a DS. They are all stylish. Um, the 405 looked more current at the time than the BX. Yeah, agreed. Although, to be fair, the 405 was a much fresher design. It was much newer. So, um, yes, the 405 did make the BX look dated. Uh, oh, in 1988, it says multi-slipful. That's a mouthful. 
1988, I bought a BX diesel estate, kept for 13 years, 200,000 miles. Your estatification video of it, very interesting, thanks. No problem at all. Um, looking at Clement's roof, there are parts of the headline in missing. Or is it normal trim for that version? Looks at least like something in the rear is missing. Oh, the black. Yes, it is. It's on the... I've taken it down. It's on the parcel shelf at the back. I've um, I've started stripping it down. That's actually the body frame. That black there. Because um, there's one... Oh, no, that one's missing as well. Yeah, I've started removing it because I've got to take this trim here. In fact, we've got to do it live. It's got to come off. Oh, God. There you go. We're going to dismantle Clement. How rusty is Clement? Oh, not too bad. Basically, this here. Let's take all this off. Sorry, I'm dismantling the car while I'm in it. Um, there is rust. Around, oh, my God. Yeah, there's rust. Um, yeah, so this here. And this bit here, this is the fret, the roof is fiberglass, so it's bond, it's bolted and bonded on. Um, and then this here is part of the shell, if you like, frame. And um, this is what's rusted. I've got holes along the oh uh, I've got oh, there's filler in there. Fantastic body filler. That's what you want to see, isn't it? Um, yeah, and then this comes off, he says. I've started pulling it all off. Yeah. It's just clipped on. It's just like a trim. Hey, work on Clement. And then there's, what on earth is that? Oh, it's wiring, that's fine. And then along here somewhere... There's a big hole. Yeah, there it is. So this frame along the top here has got a flat section in it. And that all needs grinding back and, and it's going to be welded along there. And then a bit above here is just, just falling. It's quite rusty. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's holed pretty badly. The windscreen's going to have to come out. Yeah, so there we go. Bits of trim removed, and then this here is just this is just a a vinyl which is kind of like bonded to the fiberglass. I don't know. One thing I don't know is whether I have to take this off, peel this off of the roof to remove the roof. And to be honest, looking at it, I don't think I do because I don't see how you can get in there to do it. I'll look into that. There you go. Uh, the eighties are amazing. Um, yeah, I like the eighties. Yeah, but they were tacky, but yeah, I liked them. Uh, 900 convertible looks great and is sort of practical, but the body is not rigid at all. Shakes around when driving. I've heard this. Um, I was really close to a Tom Carr member. Up and down. Um, I was really close to buying a C4 coupe before I bought this Panda the other week. That's quite a difference. Looked interesting. Thoughts? Um, I liked my C4 coupe. Um very comfy it's a vts 180 very comfy seats um i wouldn't i wouldn't say it was fast because it was not a lot of power for a, a modern car that weighed sort of 1350 kilos or whatever it was but it had character um yeah very comfy amazing aircon good stereo it was a cheap car it looked funky it cost me more than a c6 not by much but but it looked funky and and you know it wasn't a driver's car by any stretch um didn't handle amazingly well rode pretty badly but i liked it i really liked it um you know it felt it just felt a little different if you thought of it as a practical coupe as opposed to a hot hatch it would make a lot more sense so um yeah decent decent cars i don't know if i'd have like a 1.6 or something but um a two liter hdi vts might make sense because it's a six speed have it remapped, it'll be quicker than a 180. Um, you'll get 50 to the gallon out of it, probably. So, yeah, oh, they're decent.
have I ever owned an English slough built Citroen? And was it better or worse than a French car? I haven't, because the oldest Citroen I've ever owned is the SM, which is a 72. Um, this is 75. Uh, but they only built them up to 60 something. And they came over in a, in a kit of parts. So they basically assembled them in slough to get around the tax problem. My seat's covered in rust now. Quite uncomfortable. Um, Ulrich says, hey, don't really have anything in particular to ask. So 2.1 versus 2 litre HDI. Good old XUD versus common rail. Um, well, I've never had a 2.1. Um, I've had a 2 litre HDI and I found it better than the XUD as I would have expected to because it's newer but it pulled from lower revs it was more economical like 10 miles to the gallon more economical um, and I never had any problems with it so yeah I would, I would go HDI um, TRD was rebadged in Anglican markets right I hear this they didn't mind putting Saxo in the market as even though its name meant fellatio in slang around here. Did it? Where's that? What country is that? I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was called, yeah, TRDs weren't badged TRDs here. They were badged DTR. TRS was the petrol version of a higher spec BX or CX or AX. Um, and in the continent, TRD, because the S meant, I need to do the BX trim video, don't I? The T... What does TR mean? T means very. The R means... I'm well, not means to flip you off there. The R means rich, rich basically. Spec, like rich spec. And an S means sportif. If you add E, it means economy. So you had a lower... Either a smaller engine or a bigger engine and a lower state of tune. So if you had a 16 RE, you had 16 rich spec, not very rich. That was Trey Reich. Um, so you had 16 RE, 16, 1.6 R, rich, middling spec, E, economy. So it would have been like the 80 horsepower version or something like that. If you had the RS, exactly the same, but S for sportif means you have the full power, 1.6. And then if you had TRS, it's very rich, sporty. You wouldn't get a TRE in bother. But yeah. And then there's the D, it would have just been TRD, would be the diesel. So you have an RD, you have TZD, instead of TZI or TZS. It's, yeah, it can be complicated, but it is quite simple. Um, yeah, except they didn't do TRD, because in the UK and anywhere that speaks English, TRD means turd. Um, and they thought that was not funny. So... 900 convertible is fun, but just to then expect it to be a sports car. I think you can say that of a lot of cars. A lot of people view a coupe as a sports car, and I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think that a sports car is a is a purpose built, you know, front engined or mid engined rear wheel drive car designed purposely to be fun to drive, and and everything else comes second. So um yeah anything just because it's a coupe or whatever or a convertible doesn't make it a sports car same with bmw convertibles and things like that um ohio pete word is that you own an sm word would be correct are you planning to keep it as it was built or put a euro front end on it and a manual gearbox um i don't mind the auto box because i don't like driving manual left hand drive cars so um yeah, I uh, I don't uh, no no I, no I'll keep telling myself that um, no I don't a manual box in an SM is is special isn't it the way they change gear and everything but uh, I don't mind it being an auto the front end is a bit sad because I do like the original front end but two reasons why I wouldn't go for it. A, I, I don't mind the fact of you know, keeping the history of the car the way it is. It is a US spec car. That is part of its history. I can fit LEDs into those lights, so they look OEM, but they'll work amazingly well, not like the stupid sealed beams it's got. So, um, and I can also put glass lenses over those. They don't fit amazingly, but they fit well enough. So that's that bugs me more, the fact it hasn't got a full glass screen across the front. That's what really bugs me. 
Um, the other thing is to convert it to Euro spec would be in parts. You're looking at about, I've been told, you're looking at about six thousand pounds in parts. Um, and also you've got all the hydraulics for the headlights because the headlight steering and leveling is hydraulic on an SM. Of course it is. So not the hydraulics from the suspension. It's a separate isolated hydraulic circuit. Um, and you'd need all that as well. So uh, probably not. I've got better things to spend the money on. Um, well, I haven't got the money. But if I had the money, I'd have better things to spend the money on. Um, but it would be nice. You know, if someone said to me, I'll donate you a Euro front end as long as you promise to put it on your car, then I'd put it on the car. But I'm not going to go out and bust the gut to spend a load of money and change it, because that is that is part of the car's history. It is a US spec car, and that is part of the um, the story of the SM, is the US sales as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I've made my peace with it. Um, and I'm, The only thing that bugs me about the gearbox is it's three-speed. I wish it was four. Um, but I think because of the year of build, or the month of build, that should have the longer ratio gearbox because the early ones are quite short, three quite short ratios, and they're screaming at motorway speeds. I think that one's got the um, the slightly later one, but I have to get the serial numbers off it and confirm. So, uh, hello, is this still live? Well, you asked that <laughs> nearly ten minutes ago. Um, yeah, <laughs> amazingly, it is. Don't pick at it; you'll only make it worse. You sound like my mum or my wife, actually. She's like that. One picking scabs and things. Fun fact, C6 petrol ES9J4S was tweaked by Porsche. The cylinder heads were, you're right. Back to your problem, I do know diesel owners also complain about pulling away being rubbish with a 2.7. Engine swap maybe. No, I'm not that bothered. I'll live with it. I'm not going to swap the engine. A remap uh, apparently does get rid of it. So, excellent, fantastic reference. I can't remember what I said now. Got to go, Boward. Yeah, bye, Zhao, Sarah, Oliviera. Cool, what have I missed? <laughs> Not a lot. Uh, give me a Zara and Claudia Schiffer, please. Do you remember that advert? I do. I was never a massive Claudia Schiffer fan. I was I have quite different. So she's very tall. Um, but, um, yes, I remember that advert. Uh, will he stop before the three-hour mark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well... I knew it was going to take ages, because the last two I've done... Have I done two or three? I can't remember. The last ones I've done, they've gone on and on and on. And I've had to, like, keep stopping. Um, and uh, and going, oh, no, what time is it? Blah, blah, blah. And this time I thought, you know what? I know it's going to take ages. And I know the time will just go... Poof. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, he dived in on the rust values of Clement. I think the end is nigh. It's not. Clement, honestly, Clement ain't that bad. Clement's not that bad. I can't go nuts working on Clement because I have other jobs I have to do first. Um, so I won't be going crazy on Clement. But, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do little odds and sods as I go. Um, and then the real content will will start up. I'm hoping to get a bit more. Oh, my God, someone's filled the windscreen seal in. Oh, what? The windscreen rubber? Someone's... Someone's put filler over it. Right, I know. I need new windscreen rubber for a DS. If anyone, well, for a Clement. Oh man. Ugh. Oh dear. Well, that'll be fun. That's some content there, isn't it? So I'll dig all that out. I uh, can't wait to listen to this in full on my drive to work tomorrow. Could listen to him for hours, about three hours to be exact. Is your drive to work about three hours by chance? Um, concerning the header frame, the trim is really different from the one in mine. As I told you in a previous video, there is a heating wire to heat the glue for the roof. It might have been originally. Do you think it's still going to be in there? Do you think it'll still work? I would be amazed if it did. Um, the SM's got the same thing for the front and rear windows, because they're bonded in. Um, but the heating wire is just, like, dust. There's nothing left of it. So, uh, you'd have to cut through it. But apparently, the bodywork that the windscreen is glued to is probably so rusty that the sealant will just come out with rust. So, um, if I take the windscreen trims off the SM window, uh, apparently if I lay on my back and kick it, it'd probably just fall out. So, um, I don't think that'll happen on this. I suspect I should be cutting. But I'll try heating it up. 
but I'm not going to bet money that it works, so. Uh, the trim is really different from mine. Well, it might be, because this is a, don't forget, this is a D Super. So this is basically a, a later version of an ID. It's more basic in here. Um, I have seen some where they've got like a sort of fabric. I mean, it looks much nicer, and I may end up doing something like that. But yeah, this is uh, this is not this is probably a basic headliner um, because it's a basic, more ver basic version of a car. Turkey you're in, okay. Um, I can't remember what the question was now. <laughs> I can't remember what the question was. No, sorry, I completely blanked. From my house to where old Liz is lying. Old Liz. Oh, but Scotland. Because the Queen. R.I.P. Queen. Uh, guy mentioned TRD was from Turkey. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, Saxo. So you get Saxos in Turkey, you have a bit of a giggle then. 40 years of slough assembled citrons. That's, yeah, that's it. Uh, I've never had one. Ten twenty. You must have a very understanding other half. I do, allowing you to sit here talking to us on a Friday night. Mine would have dragged me out of my garage long ago. Um, yeah, she's very understanding. Um, well, I'm probably gonna go in a minute anyway. Nothing wrong with the sound. Good. Off to bed as I have work in the morning. I don't. Luckily, I can sleep in. Um. What does Z stand for in TZI? I don't actually know. Um, I don't know if it actually stood for anything. I think it might just be that they wanted to update. So TRS became TZS. And TGS replaced RS. So the, when they dropped RS, they moved it over to TGS. And when they dropped RE, that moved to TGE. And when they, moved, when they dropped TRS, that moved to... TZS. There you go. Or TZD. Or TZI if it's injected. If it's a petrol injection, TZI. Um, yeah. And then there's all sorts of other stuff going on as well. So, uh, yeah. I will do, I'll do a video. I can't... Yeah, I'll, I'll sit there for ages gassing on about BX trims. And I can't imagine there'll be many people who are interested in watching it. But, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do... I basically, you know, you've got the hierarchy, haven't you? The, the tiers... Top, top spec up here, top spec 16 valve basically, there, there wasn't a higher spec, not in the UK anyway, um, and then bottom spec would just be a 14 in the UK, of which there is one, there's one 14 in the UK, uh, please 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 do not paint Clement, says Neil, um, whatever happens, just like you said, please, I have no intention of painting Clement, well there were some bits I'll have to paint, because I'll, I'll have to repair some of it, um, and I will be painting the shell and this gloss bit, uh, this black bit, and redoing that. Oh, there's the wire. Oh, no, is that the wire? No, it's not. It's not. That's the aerial. Oh, okay. Right, well, the aerial doesn't work because it's, um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't work. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to paint it. I'm not going to paint it. Clement's boot lid, steel or fiberglass replacement planned? Good question, Jeff Longley. Um, part of me thinks fiberglass would be sensible because fiberglass doesn't rust. Um, but the other part of me thinks there's an absolutely no way I can put a fiberglass boot lid on it. And yeah, I don't want to fake anything, but you can't really... How would you make that look right on the car? Um, I mean, the right thing to do would be to just fit it and not even paint it. Um... But no, I think, I suspect I'll probably buy a used boot lid. Uh, there's a couple around, they're not cheap, and they're, you know, there's rusty ones out there for 180 quid. And you think, really? Um, it needs a boot lid. Can't get around that, it needs a boot lid. This one is too far gone. So, uh, yeah, this needs doing. But I have seen the fiberglass ones. Um, may well go for one of them, I don't know. Uh Roof will find a way to rust. Yeah, well, 
should be all right. Fiberglass. It's just this bit round it. But I'll repair all this and I'll weld in what I need to weld in. And then this will get treated with paint. This will be heavy duty. Um, gone over. This will not be rusting again. Um, so yeah, I shall be making sure of that. And this the, the frame will be... I'll, I'll get the frame looking as pretty as I can get it. Um, but yeah, it's just... And then the roof will just get stuck back on as it is now. Um... R.I.P. Yeah, indeed, R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, oh, I see more auto box talk in the comments. Same box as XE70. Yeah, same one. Hundred and ten people watching you, respectfully. Are they? They might not be. They might be laughing. Uh, randomly ramble on. Please don't underestimate yourself. People are weird and watch. Almost anything from creators they like, maybe. We watch because we are interested. If you want to talk about trim levels, please do. Isaac plays bass. Do you know, I love... I'm a big Rush fan, so my favourite bass player is Geddy Lee. So if if, uh, if you can do Geddy Lee riffs, do them. Film it. A, B a video with BX trims seems very interesting. My first VAR was a Citroen Visa. Oh, car. Uh, VAR. Um, my first car was a Citroen Visa 17RD. What do you think? Cool. Um, I wouldn't say a Visa was cool. I've never driven one. I'd quite like to have a go in one. But... No, kind of cool. There's something cool about the very early air-cooled two-cylinder two ones. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say they were cool. Are they cool? They might be cool now. They wouldn't look cool when they come out. Not a beige 17 RD. Well, it would have been bloody cheap to run. I mean, imagine the economy, and that was insane. Um, yeah. I like a visa. I think it's quite interesting. But have I caught the comments up? I think I might have caught up with the comment. No, I haven't. I'll just recent. Oh, I have. No, I nearly have. Uh, UA call. I find it very interesting because I was in the same situation some years ago. After I bought a rotten DS and restored it over years, so I can feel for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've caught up with the comments. I have. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to have to go in a minute because it's like two and a half hours in now. And my phone's got quite hot. Oh, God. Uh, need to go dog walking time here. A glorious morning. It's cold. It's, uh, what time is it now? 20 to 11. Nearly uh, in the UK, and it's about 16 degrees, something like that. It feels hot. I don't get cold, I always feel really hot. So, um, I'm afraid to type now. Was the I was listening to Rush earlier. No Nirvana, please, they were overrated. No, not really. You can, you can, you can think, you know, you can have your own opinions and things like that. I don't think Nirvana are overrated. I think they they probably are from the point of view of um, kind of like the way if anything gets becomes popular, then it becomes overrated, doesn't it? So um, and something like Rush, although they're huge, always kind of go under the radar. So they don't. It's not a case of selling out because they do huge stadiums, but um, I think the difference with Rush is that they are unquestionably the most talented band out there they there is no band out there i don't think there's ever been a band out there where all the people in it were as good at what they do as rush are or rush were um because the you know the vocal i mean geddy lee as a bass player I know bass is supposed to be the most simple one isn't it but as a bass player he's excellent you got Alex Lifeson on guitars who can, you know, goes under the radar because the drummer is just so outstanding. He's like the, basically regarded as the greatest drummer of all time. But then the, then the guitarist gets overlooked. And then you listen to the songs, and I watch the React videos on YouTube and things, and the first thing everyone says when they've never heard of the band, they hear the song and they go, what, this is three people? Because it sounds like it's about six. And they're just so talented. Um... 
they were the musicians musicians weren't they so um yeah i don't think nirvana are overrated i think i think they're just they become aware with the mainstream i mean i like foo fighters when it was called cool when when they were unknown as much in the uk and then they become popular and all of a sudden all the all the sort of die hard rock people are like, oh, I don't like foo fighters it's not pop admittedly i've gone off foo fighters i'm not really into them much um as i was but yeah i think I think I think I, I, people different people see different things, but I watch a lot of React videos online, and I watch Justin Hawkins' channel as well. He's fascinating, and when you watch people who who analyze music and you, you know you look and you know you you're listening to industry experts, um, the stuff they say about Nirvana is the stuff that you hadn't thought of, you hadn't picked it up, and there's a, a lady I watch who who like analyzes singing. And like a lot of people who just hear Nirvana will go, well, Kurt Cobain's not even singing, he's just screaming or whatever. But then she listens to it and she goes, no, he's doing some really difficult stuff there. Like he's he's doing this and he's twisting that vowel and he's elongating this bit, which you wouldn't normally do. And it gets, it's really fascinating. Um, so no, I don't think they're overrated. I, th I think, I can see why people might say they are. Because, you know, but in reality, I think they bought a genre of music that was previously not really in the mainstream into the mainstream. So a lot more people heard that type of music and then that shapes the course of bands that followed it. So this has nothing to do with cars, I admit, but I think I think Nirvana were um game changers, really. They weren't the first. Yeah, sure, they weren't the first, but they changed they moved the goalposts quite a lot. And after bands after Nirvana were different to bands before Nirvana. If you're asking me that era of music, I'm more of Pearl Jam man, to be honest. But if we're going to Seattle, um, I think Pearl Jam were, you know, are um, definitely one of my favourites. But oh yeah, I do like Nirvana. So I just got a T-shirt. I'll, I'll put it on this morning. So. Um, I bought a Lotus with a galvanised chassis to not deal with rust. Ended up having to rebuild door beams. <laughs> there you go, you see. Um, right, what am I... Have I caught up? Have I caught up? I think I've caught up. No, I don't know. I think it's frozen. No, it froze. It's all come back. Motorhead. Uh, best three-piece after Cream. Rush are better than Cream. That's silly. Inside DS while driving, probably some George Mustaki music from the 70s is best. Rush Deep Purple. Jog on. Budgie are better than Deep Purple. Uh, someone drag him out of Clement. I've watched from the beginning... And now he needs medical help. He doesn't really like Rush. He's just hyperventilating. Rush are brilliant. They are absolutely brilliant. Uh, this, come on, this is fun. How often are you able to watch someone having so much pleasure from simply being in a place? What, in, in Clement? I'm in Clement. I'm not going to be in Clement for much longer. I'm going to be in the C6 in a minute. I have caught up. Motorhead, Motorhead, Motorhead. Do you like Motorhead, Man Called X? I'm not really... Although, I tell you what, I'm I'm getting back into Metallica quite a, in quite a way now. Because I watched Stranger Things the other night. And I've just caught up with Stranger Things. And I've seen... The uh, Master of Puppets scene, which is probably one of the coolest scenes I've seen. Uh, coolest scenes I've seen. One of the coolest scenes I've seen on telly in a very long... I mean, the running up the hill one, the Kate Bush scene was quite good. But that, that was awesome. Um, I watched it again on YouTube earlier on. It's just so cool. Uh, so, yeah, I've started getting back into that. Um, but I've also been listening to Girls Aloud, so... <sighs> Bit of a mix. Girls Aloud were brilliant. I don't care. Girls Aloud were brilliant. 
what do I think about C6 petrol engines, considering importing one from Japan? Uh, I've done this already, to be honest. I've, I've covered it earlier in the video. Um, they, they're decent engines. It's the same V6 as the Xantia and um, C5 and everything. And, and a Clio V6. Renault Clio V6 has the same engine, albeit in a slightly higher state of tune. Um, they're very rare, so I've never driven one. Uh, from what I can tell, and from speaking to people who have, they are very smooth. Very, very smooth. Very quiet. Um, which is what you want in a C6. Although V6 engines sound nice, you you just want it quiet, don't you, in a C6. Um, and a fair bit slower than a diesel, certainly once you get moving. Um, which I could I could believe, because the V6 has got fuck, over £100 feet less torque than a, a diesel. Which, it doesn't matter how you add it up, that's quite a lot less. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the petrol, I would think, is... Probably great in many ways, not as good in others. Um, but I've never driven one, so. But it's a good engine. The engine itself is good. Probably being asked a bit too much to haul 1800 whatever kilos it is, or 1900 kilos of C6 around. Um, but you know, and, and coupled to an auto gearbox as well. But yeah, you just have to drive it and see. C6 is good, so you know, they're very likable. So you'll probably enjoy it. Many thanks for tonight's rambling. Yeah, this has been a hell of a ramble, hasn't it? My wife will think I'm down the pub. She wouldn't. She'd just think he's probably still at work. Rush are talented musicians. No need for an ambulance. Um, yeah. Rush are, I think, the most talented, or certainly the most talented band that, you know, are out there in the public domain. I'm sure there might be more talented people out there, but, you know, you could say that about anything, couldn't you? Um... Yeah, you listen to the way that the, the songs are arranged and and the lyrics as well. It's not just that, it's the lyrics. Neil Pert, um, or Pitt, is it Pitt or Pert? He, um, or Pet, he uh, did a lot of them. And yeah, he's just a fascinating character. Just a real shame he's gone because, um, yeah, some of the stuff, some of the lyrics are just absolute genius. They really are. Um, yeah, so no, big, big fan of that. Um, I could bang on about music all day. I love music. So, um, at this stage, you just won't admit that Clement's door's no longer open from the inside. There you go. That's it, rub. Ooh. That's it, rubbing the front wing. The front wing is bouncing up and down when I open and shut the door. <laughs> it's doing that. Clunks shut. I don't like madness. I don't like madness. No. <laughs> There's a few bands I don't like. I don't like madness. Um, who else don't I like? Coldplay. Don't like Coldplay. Uh, don't like Red Hot Chili Peppers much. The um, couple done two songs I didn't mind but I like that roller coaster one. Uh trying to think. Uh, I can't think of any others. Check out a young band from Canada if you like Rush. Crownlands, just a two-piece, but they sound like Rush and Led Zepp. Interesting. I mean, some of the early Rush stuff, a lot of bands cite Rush as being an inspiration um, because, you know, you forget that Rush... When did Rush get together? Was it very early 70s or even late 60s? And the sound changed a lot. It cha They changed a lot of times. And originally, it was just kind of like... It wasn't so prog rocky. It was just like normal heavy rock. But uh, I think... Um, they were instrumental in, in instrumental, good pun, um, in that kind of sound. And but also, I think, as I say, I love Budgie, which are kind of one of the unknown ones. Um, and people again use them as as being like, um, you know, a lot of bands taking inspiration from them and then going on to be a lot more successful. Budgie was some small little Welsh heavy rock band but they did some amazing tracks like proper like 
if you like Deep Purple, you'd probably like it. Quite similar voice, actually, to Geddy Lee, the singer from Budgie. I can't remember his name. They were heavy Welsh nationalists. So, they, yeah, they got they said controversial things, apparently. But, yeah, they did some amazing stuff. Um, but I'll check out Crownlands. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. Isn't Cliff Richard the pinnacle? My auntie loves Cliff Richard. ABBA was very 80s. I wasn't mad on ABBA. R.E.M. Mm, not really into R.E.M. There's a couple of ones I didn't mind, but... Um, C6 Petrol Fun Facts. Two also has active valved back box. Does it? Does it really? I didn't know that. Oh, hang on. The seat, this back, the back box on this has got a blanked port. I wonder if that's something to do with that. I feel like I'm intrigued now. Not the talk of the diesel, but get it over two and a half, three thousand. It pulls great. Yeah, it probably does. It's it's a very different type of power delivery, isn't it? Um, diesels and petrols, so or naturally aspirated petrols. Um, heading off says Tom Carr. It's been a long day. Really enjoyed this evening. Good. Thank you for coming. I'm going to be heading off in uh, definitely no more than nine minutes. So because that'll be three hours. Uh, well, it won't quite be three hours because I was late. But it'll be eleven o'clock and I'm going home. Um, Luther Allen Allison, I don't know what that's about. Love Budgie, have an 80s ticket stub somewhere. I do, I'm massively, uh, I'm a huge Budgie fan. So, which is a shame because there's not much to listen to, is there? There's only like, is it two albums? Two, two main albums? Or is it three? They did some live stuff on Spotify though, which is quite good. There's also on Spot on Spotify, there's, um, there's a, uh, a tribute band called I think they're called Band Oiler which is like one the name of one of the songs they're actually quite good they're, they're not bad um, and that whole album's on there they play all the all the all the hits I don't like tribute bands but that's one tribute band I'd go and see um, Fleetwood Mac yeah don't mind them I don't really know much about them Patient is referring to Budgie, so is getting better. Blodwin Pig hasn't been mentioned, but his but eyes are capable of focus. <laughs> Budgie, yeah, Budgie, class. Budgie's quite, he's got quite a similar voice to Eddie Lee, to be fair. It's a similar kind of tone and everything, and style, quite similar. And similar eras as well. Um, and will Budgie 3? No. Oh, what would... They changed a few times, didn't they? One of the guitar the guitarists, John something. I think he died. Were they four piece? I can't remember. The F one theme tune. Uh, the F one theme tune. That's the one that Fleetwood Mac covered, isn't it? Before you go, just want to say thanks for the chat tonight. Enjoyed the evening. Good. I have more, more ten albums, Rich. Okay, it's calling it a night. Ox, he's been one of the main people talking tonight uh, in Turkey. Thanks for the cool conversation. Say hi to Clement. Say it yourself. Um, yeah, have a good night, and you. Um, I'll be off soon as well. So. It's uh, so it's eleven o'clock here. It's pretty late there, isn't it? What's Turkey? Is it an hour, before, an hour ahead, or two hours ahead? This is the longest one I've done, longest live stream I've done, and it'll probably get demonetized because I've sworn somewhere. Fleetwood Mac wrote it. The chain. Yeah, I know. I was joking, you moron. Citroen Creative Technology. I know him by the way. I can call him a moron. Citroen Creative Technology. Ten budgie albums. Really. Admittedly, I might only know the the more well, I say mainstream, not mainstream, but I might know the I might only know the the more well known ones. Um, what was there was Squawk was that one? I've got a T-shirt with an album on it and a horse on the front of it. Squawk had like a ship, spaceship or an aeroplane or something. 
No, I can't remember. Kind of annoyed I'll lose all these comments, but best to listen to when I'm in full on a drive. If, wherever you're driving, I hope you're having fun. You must be a bit... Yeah, you've got to be bored listening to this. Thank you, you way Is it you way you way Cole? Well, I nearly called you you way Rossler then. You know, 90s football again. Wow. Ten albums, Psycho. That's... I'm going to have to look into this. Thanks for the video, Scott Walter in America. Thank you, Scott. Um, whereabouts in America are you, Scott? I'm intrigued. Just finished watching your video about your holiday. Kudos to the C6. It didn't let you down. No, it didn't. The C6 um, earned a wash that it still hasn't been given. So, but yeah, the C6 did brilliantly. Have I ever owned a Peugeot? Yes, Goldberg versus Benoit. I've owned... Um, I have a little bit of footage that I haven't used yet on a Peugeot that I took apart. Um, I had a Peugeot 205 diesel once, which we used to run on veg oil, which I bought at Lidl, and uh, decanted into the fuel tank in the car park and got some funny looks. Um, and that had done nearly 300,000 miles, done over 300,000 miles, I think, when we got rid of it, or when the person who had it after got rid of it. Um, with a 106 XSI, which I, I could tell you stories about that one. I had a 106 rally, had a Series 1 rally a few years ago. Sold that for a holiday in Disney. Um, I rolled my eyes there if you're listening to this. Um, what else have I had? Oh, I had a 407. That was good, actually. 407 SW. Just an old smoker, but it was obviously C6 without the gas bag suspension, isn't it? Um, yeah, that was all right. Yeah, I've had a few. Nothing interesting. Well, apart from the 106 Rally. Um, I like the 205. I do like 205s. But I like normal 205s. I'm not obsessed with them being the, the GTI. I just think the 205 is a great car. Um, I like 405s as well. But, yeah. I had a 406 Coupe, which I've taken apart. Um, and some of that will probably go into another project. But there will be more on that later on. Um, just finished watching a bit of it. Have you ever owned a Peugeot? How was the sound system in the C6? Brilliant. It's really good. It's got the JBL set up in it. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not faultless, but it's it's very good. Really good. Makes uh, listening to music good. Commute from Glasgow to Aberdeen is boring as sin. Is it? I thought it would be all like picturesque and stuff. 205 diesel, nice. It was, it was quite cool. Upstate New York. Oh, okay, so you're like... Um... Yeah, you're about as close to our time zone as you could be then, aren't you? Um, had a six oh seven once, says David Cook. Uh, yeah, I've never read a, I've never read anything like that. I saw loads of those in France and Veltatis. There was quite a few of those. There was loads of six oh sevens. No C six, well two C sixes, so, and one of them had Spanish plates on it. How have you, Mister Up and Down? I used to have a four oh five GRDT. And apart from my current Ovlov, had the comfiest seats ever. 405s are, um, they're really good. They're really comfy. They're smooth riding, good handling. They're great cars. They're really, really good cars. So, um, have I hit my 11 o'clock buffer yet? Two minutes to go. And then I'm going to sign off. And I've got to remember my cheese. I cannot leave my cheese in the fridge. Because it will, it will turn. All my Belgian waffles. I bought some Belgian waffles earlier and put them in the cupboard. And I'm not leaving them here. Um, I've done well not to eat them all in one hit tonight, but yeah, so, uh, Glasgow to Oban would be picturesque, I need to go to Scotland more now, I really do, I wanted to take the imp there, but I mean, it didn't even make it around Goodwood, so I don't think it would make it to Scotland, um, maybe that'll be a Clement trip, I don't know, I want to do that North West, no, North Coast 500 is it, or North West? Keep getting mixed up between that and the motorbike race. Northwest 200 and NT 500. I think it's that way around. I can't remember. But yeah, I want to drive around Scotland basically. I need to do more, more touring around here. Um, so I've got the cars for it, so I need to be doing that. Um, but yeah, I've been. I've only been to Scotland once. I drove from here to in one hit in a Land Rover Defender. With huge tyres on it. It used to hum its way down the road. And they were so big. The gearing was screwed. And it couldn't hang on to fifth gear. You used to have to keep changing down. It was a TD5. 
totally jacked up kitted thing and I drove it to Scotland with a big trailer with nothing on it and it went we went from here to that was a long day in fact I did it twice have I been in Scotland twice I can't remember I can't remember have I been to Scotland twice I went there once and it broke down yeah I, know, I must have been there twice I took it once and the head gasket went on it and it pressurised and it blew it. It had a thermostat in the fuel rail and it pressurised so much it blew the thermostat out at the end of that and threw coolant everywhere and conked out outside a pub and all the locals cheered because it was going up a hill and the lady came out and asked if I wanted to make an order and I said yes and I tried to fix it on the side of the road. Uh, I think we did bodge it back together. Um, and then got it on to wherever we were going, which was somewhere near, the, it was the forest or something, some woods somewhere, um, and it had overheated so much that it bent the cylinder head, and the head gasket it started to eat the cylinder head, um, it got that bad, and I tried to bodge it back up to drive it back again, using water from ponds and things, and bodging it together, um, but it didn't make it, I think it made it about 10 miles, and it got near is it Dumfries? I think the highest I've been is Glasgow. Yeah, fascinating. Sorry. Um, Alpha 156 motor leather, best seats ever. I, uh, shame about the rest of the car. See, I would I would go round the other way. I had Momo leather seats in my 156. I didn't like them. But I loved the rest of the car. And mine should have had... Recaro cloth seats and someone had changed it because it still had the cloth B pillar trim and I was really annoyed because that would have been great but they, I didn't like the Momo leather so a friend does an early 405 SRI which is fantastic yeah they're cool NC500 that's it first car was an A-Reg Renault 11 that was comfy but it was abs 7183 um, Mr. Pastry also I've been urged to start my own channel should I? I've only got an S60 and an MGF. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I wouldn't say no, would I, if I've done it? But, yeah, I mean, you just do... The only thing I would say is... Don't start the channel if you're worried about numbers and if you're worried about how many people will see it and how popular it's going to be. And if you get into all that... Um, then don't, uh, only do it if you are just, you've got something, you've, you've got some cars, whatever they are, it doesn't matter, and you're, you're passionate about them and you could wax on about them all the time and you could, you enjoy sharing what you're doing, um, and you would just be doing you, you just do what you do and it's like, if people watch it, great, if they don't, fine, what you, the bit you enjoyed was making the video and editing it and everything, that gets boring, but yeah, editing it and everything, and sticking it on YouTube, and putting it out there, and then saying, yes, I've done, I've done that, and I've achieved it, and if you like doing that, and you don't care about how many people watch it, then yes, do it, 100%, because if you get the enjoyment out of it, but you're worried about what other people, how many other people see it, and, and kind of, because I mean, it's not about being, it's not about being, um, getting validated or anything like that is it? it it's just some people think oh, i don't want to put this all this effort in and then no one sees it well it's like how bothered are you because a lot of people try this and i've seen people recently getting despondent because the numbers they're getting are really low and to be honest the numbers i've got are way higher than i thought they were going to be way 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 higher than i thought they were going to be i don't know what i've done to do that um, but then at the same time, you see some channels and they've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers and, and that's a full-time gig for them. Um, and I think, well, I imagine what they're doing that I'm not is they're probably doing things for YouTube. They're probably buying cars for YouTube specifically to feed it, whereas I'm not. I'm just filming what I'm doing. So I think if you're just filming what you're doing and you love what you're doing and you're passionate about it and you're happy to talk about it, even if no one's listening, then yeah, you can't lose. Um... And if you're good at it, and you enjoy it, then then, then you're laughing. 
Um, if you're worried about the numbers and you're doing it because you want to try and build something, that's when I would say, mm, okay, no, I don't know. Because I think if you knew how to make it successful, then you would already be successful. And by success, I mean successful in terms of like numbers and money and, and everything like that. Um, yeah, I'm not really the right person to ask because I'm, I'm not in it really for those reasons. And, um, and I suspect I never will be and I never will be that big. I'll never be at the point where I'm able to pay for a lot of stuff uh, based on YouTube simply because I'll just put out what I put out and, you know, um, if people like it, great. And if they don't, all right, it's fine. It's not a, not, not a thing, not, not a problem. Um, so yeah, yeah, if you're passionate about it and you're interested in it, you, yeah, do it. And you know, if you try it and you don't like it or it doesn't go well or whatever, well, at least you tried it. So, you know, life's pretty short, isn't it? Um, North Coast 500, that's it. Road to Oban is hilarious but stressful when you need to be at a place at a time. <laughs> yeah. I've acquired the 300C with a Merc 3 litre diesel engine and it lags on pull away, but once moving it flies. It's it, it probably a similar thing again. It's probably mapping because all these engines, especially these modern diesels, it's all fly by wire. There's no throttle cable. Um, and you probably find that, you know, you put your foot down and the computer's like, ah, oh, I hear what you're asking. I can't do that because if I do that repeatedly, I'm going to launch your gearbox. But I'll give you as much as I can, I think the gearbox can take. And that is not what you want. And then it feels like it's lag. Of course, once it's moving, it doesn't have to worry about it, and you get all your talk. Um, so yeah, it's probably a similar thing. It's not unique to the C6. It's, it's probably any diesel that's got a bit of grunt that hasn't got a huge heavy-duty gearbox in it, basically. Um, great stream. Sorry for missing the start. Don't worry about it. I did as well. Uh, and the answer to my question, it's not, don't worry, they were, they weren't great. I think I'm going to go back through them all properly. I had a Defender. I didn't have a Defender. Um, no, I didn't, the, the, we had a Defender here as part of the business, um, which, uh, it was basically a, an, it was a support vehicle for an off-road rally racer type thing, a bit like a, um, bowler wildcat, and it was a... 110 TD5 painted in Focus ST orange. Um, it was the support vehicle. It had like sand ladders and huge wheels and massive arches and fridge in it and had a hydraulic, no, it had an air compressor in it and everything like that. It weighed about 500 tons and made three horsepower. So yeah, you can imagine it wasn't very fun. It was fun. I mean, it was rubbish to drive on the road, really, but it was fun because it was so rubbish. Um, you know, for such a big big vehicle you sat pretty much on the door um hey sorry i'm late mate i'm sorry i'm going in a minute <laughs> uh hi rich um but you're better late than never uh hi rich and clement hello tim stinson i'm very sorry i'm going in a minute i'm probably here longer than i said i was going to be now yeah by about eight minutes that sounds about right simon there is a northumberland 250 now too yeah northumberland pretty um did I get any joy on Clement's doors and boot lid, etc.? Well, the doors, I'm, I am i don't think I'm going to try and repair the doors. The boot lid is toast. The boot lid just needs a new one or replacement. Um, and if you're new here, uh, I have removed a piece of the trim and covered myself in rust. So, uh, Northumberland 250. Might have to look at that as it's only an hour from you. Yes, it's a long way from here. Uh, hi Andy D, you might have a variable vane turbo which changes the vanes of a vacuum. He might, but he's probably got a, it's probably a torque limiting thing. Um, there's a rumour I have an SM. Yes. Look. It's been sat there for yonks doing nothing. I really should do something with that. Um, but Clement is here for training. Um... Sorry, don't get me wrong, I adored my 156, but with the rust issues, all I have left is the seats. Yeah, I didn't have mine long enough for it to rust on me, to be fair. I know they do suffer. Um, Luke Withers is off, thank you very much. I don't know what oration is, but thank you. Um, oh, Nobed's gone. Right, bedtime, Nobed, bye. 
Um, cheers, brilliant stuff. Thanks for answering questions in such detail. Can't remember what your question was, but no problem at all. Uh, did I check out the prices of DS stuff you sent me in a link on the last vid? I'm a bit behind on the comments, so I will try. I will catch up. Um, ben Reynolds says, "Do I think a DS would be too much of a job for a starter restoration?" Um, I don't know. Ask me when I'm balls deep in it. Um, no, I, from what I've seen so far from a welding point of view and everything like that, no. Um, but the hydraulics are quite complicated. Um, and from a hydraulics point of view, you would be better with something if you wanted a hydronomatic Citroen, like a BX um, or a GS. They're, that's probably pretty simple as well. But if you do one of those, um, then and, and you get rust on a BX, I would imagine the rust is harder to fix on a BX than it is on a, on a DS. Um, so... I think it depends how confident you are in your abilities, really. I don't think... A so far, I've not seen anything on the DS that's made me think, oh, my God, that's scary. Um, like I have on the SM. <laughs> I've seen some horrible things. I've seen some... I've seen some things, and I've just thought, why are they? Did why have they done that? It is called SM because of sadomasochism. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, the gearbox... On an, on an SM... This will be the last thing I say now. I'm going to sign out after this one. Um... On an SM, um, the steering is obviously fully powered and it's speed sensitive. And on a manual car, the speedo cable goes through a valve block and that, the speed of that, winds the valve in and out effectively and reduces or allows more pressure into the steering um, from a manual car. The automatic car doesn't do that because it has a different setup with the speedo cable. And what that car uses is the hydraulic pressure from the automatic gearbox to go through a valve that powers the steering rams uh, in the uh, steering rack um, and the more pressure there is in the gearbox the less pressure there is in the steering so there's a block somewhere that takes automatic fluid pressure on one side and converts it into suspension LHM pressure on the other side to do the job of the steering so that's why I bought Clement um, Clement doesn't have that but yeah, Clement. Clement's steering wheel's a bit loose. Um, yeah, Clement doesn't have that, but Clement will teach me half of the bits, and then I'll be like, right, okay, I know about all that. I know how that works. I've driven it. I've I've lived it. I know it. And then I get started on that. Oh, your question was about starting a channel. Yes, yeah, sorry, my man, my bloody memory. It's it's late. So yes, yes, hundred percent. Try restoring a Mark II Scirocco. No panels available. <laughs> So there's a lot of cars that fall under that remit, to be honest with you. CXs are hard to find bits for now. Um, yeah, I can imagine a Mark II Scirocco would be a quite a tricky one. Um, yeah, so... Cool, though. Cool cars. Right. Three hours and eight minutes. That is a record. That is the longest one I've done. Um, if I've sent you to sleep, then you are very welcome. But I am going to head back, because it's... Uh, 13 minutes past 11, so that's long even for me. How the hell there are 85 people still in here, I don't know. But, yeah, thank you for coming. Um, it's, uh, yeah, just a little... <laughs> little. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just an informal chinwag thing. Thank you for supporting the channel and watching and doing and being, you know, the, by and large, the comments are amazing. Lovely little community. I'm sure it's a community that piggybacks off the back of Hubnut or whatever, but you know all the same um and yeah I'll, I'll keep doing it um i'm going to i don't know if i'm going to that fuel power i think i'm going to that fuel power meet on sunday um if i can get back in time for the monza grand prix um i'll go to that and probably take the c6 so if you're there you can see the c6 um and then, yeah, the next videos will be... I've got a couple of talking ones about fuel hoses and things. I need to address that. I need to get to put a bit of info out there for people because the fuel hose thing is a pretty serious issue. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish the Cecily ones, even if three people watch them. And then I've got a C6 update to film. 
the video on the BX and the brakes and everything like that. We'll get there. We'll get there. So yeah, there's more coming. I haven't done any editing this week, so there'll be I had a, I had a week off, so um, there might be uh, a little bit of a lull between now and the next one that comes out, but it is coming. And in the meantime, I shall post the short video or edit and post a short video of me discovering my present, my first mailbag, um, very kindly sent to me by the guy who uh, is driving an Intercity 125. So, um, yes, thank you all very much. Good fun, good laugh, good chat. And, uh, yeah, have a good weekend, wherever you are. Or No. Oh, no, it's, no, it's, it's only Saturday, isn't it, in some places, so... See you later on. Cheers.